Hey, what's up, everybody? OJ here. Welcome back to another OJ live episode show live stream for you guys. Hopefully, all of you guys are doing good inside, inside, and not out there in the elements. I, I'll tell you one thing, boys and girls. I'll tell you one thing. It kind of sucks not being able to go to the gym, you know, but it happens. It happens, you know. So. Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple different things today, guys. Uh, thank you guys for the uh, patience for the stream. Um, I'm probably going to start using different um, streaming, uh, like not streaming software, but the site that I use to do dual streams and stuff. I'm probably going to switch because Restream has just had a, their, their YouTube APIs are busted and they're not working properly at all. So I think I'm going to be done using them until they get everything cleared out. And I'm just going to use somebody else because it's making it to where... My YouTube, the, the stream feed doesn't even show up um, when I use their servers. So I'm probably going to have to use something else. So I'm going to look into that uh, maybe tomorrow or maybe tonight after the stream. Um, no gameplay live stream tonight. Um, we did hit the bonus goal. So we will have an extra multiplayer um, Animal Crossing and bonus stream for you guys uh, soon. Um, but uh, no gameplay stream tonight just because I've got to go to sleep early because i got to wake up early in the morning again. Because this is, I got to wake up early in the morning again. So here's what I'll say, guys. Here's what I'll say. I will say this. Um, get some sleep tonight, okay? Get some sleep tonight and uh, wake up early in the morning. Maybe, maybe I'll be live early in the morning. Maybe I won't. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into some of the ninja, ninja news. Ninja news. Um, and uh, we've got some good stuff. we got some good stuff to talk about, guys. Uh, today we had a video. We had a dope video, a dope video for you guys um, this morning with really two really good content creators, uh, Endokuba um, and also um, HMK. Uh, we had both of them on the channel um, this, uh, well actually I recorded it last week, I'm going to turn the Nintendo Direct predictions, what we think is going to happen for whatever the next Nintendo Direct comes, um, so please make sure you guys check that out. It was a long video. 42 minutes, um, and it was great because um, HMK uh, cursed twice, <laughs> and I and, and I had to edit that out. But it was good that he did because if he didn't curse twice, like use the f word twice, where I had to edit it out, I wouldn't have added all the extra touches to the uh, to the like I would have just put it up there with just us just talking. I would have been like a um, like a, a PE podcast. But since he cursed twice, I had to listen to the whole thing because I forgot where he cursed because I didn't put markers uh, during the recording. So I ended up just editing the whole thing, like actually adding in, um, you know, uh, gameplay footage and adding in like little, little cute little edits. I think there was one little edit where when um, Endokuba said smash and I put in like Sakurai's face and like a holy, like, oh, like when he says smash. So I put in a little, little edit cuts here and there. So it actually made the video a lot better than what it was going to be. So shout outs to HMK for saying the F word twice. Because it made me have to edit it. Actually have to edit. Otherwise, it would have just went up. <laughs> That's why it took me some time. I was like, oh, snap. I remember. Because like, like, at first, I, I rendered it. And like I was just going to put it up. But then I'm like, oh, snap. He cussed twice. He like, said the F word twice. I got to get that out of there. So <laughs> let me let me just go ahead and edit this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me just go ahead and edit this whole thing. And yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely look at getting uh, Endokuba on the podcast. He's he's a little bit more free than, um, than HMK is. But we'll definitely think about getting Endokubo on the podcast at some point. So um, make sure you guys check it out if you haven't already done so. They, they, you know, those two guys are awesome. You know, they have some uh, great ideas and stuff. Um, so uh, definitely looking forward to collaborating with them more. I've already collaborated with them multiple times. I, HMK, I've collaborated with him multiple times. I've collaborated with Endokubo now multiple times, you know. So uh, we'll definitely have them back on the um, on the show at some point. So make sure you guys check out that video. Put it on your watch later list. It might be a good video to watch tonight. You know, um, before, you know, before tomorrow or later tonight, you can watch it or maybe you watch it in the morning. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it should be pretty good. It should be, it's a pretty good video. There's some good stuff in there. Um, and, uh, so, so yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's a good video. So you guys, have, I think like over what 4,000 people have watched it. So would have definitely liked it to be more, but Hey, I understand. I get it. I think a lot of people aren't even getting my notifications and stuff for my videos. So whatever um so anyway uh, let's go into some more ninja news guys uh please make sure that you hit the notifications button um there is a notification bell on the channel if you're not subscribed make sure just actually check to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because youtube is sometimes randomly unsubscribing people so just check to make sure that you're still subscribed i know it might seem weird but just check make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you have the bell uh notified as well 
uh, just so you can get the uh, just get the streams whenever they come up and get the uh, the videos whenever they do come up. But do know that even if you have the bell notified and everything, you hit the bell, it might not give you a notification. So check the channel every single morning. No matter where you live in the world, you should have a video in the morning. If it's well, if you're in UK or if you're overseas, it should be in the afternoon. So always just check either evening or afternoon if you're in like uh, advanced time zone boys. Okay, uh, super 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 East Coast boys. So please just check uh, your uh, check check the page and the, um, if you're like UK or Europe just check the page um, in like the late afternoon there should be a video up for you guys if you're um, here in the US or you know this hemisphere just check um, check uh, in the morning um, no later than 10 o'clock you should always have a video up so if you don't see anything in your sub feed please check the main channel okay elite ninja news shout outs to everybody Thank you guys so much. Yesterday when I was streaming Animal Crossing, we pretty much had a pretty slow day when it just comes to everything overall. But we got like four or five new Elite Ninja in a row in Animal Crossing last night. It was freaking crazy. Like I was just like, wow, really? Like I can't believe like this many people Elite Ninja up. So we actually hit a PE, new PE record. 220 Elite Ninja. I mean, seriously. You guys are freaking amazing. And as soon as I can get YouTube emotes to work, we're going to get a bunch of new cool emotes. Um, I kind of really want to help some people right now that are commissioned, like um, in terms of like, uh, there are people that are kind of struggling artists that aren't getting any work and because their day job and stuff. So um, I'm looking at finding an emote commission artist that can do like a bunch of emotes for me, um, especially at this time period, they need work. So I'm looking at, I'm retooling all the emote system. Um, we got 220 um, um, Elite Ninja here. So thank you guys so much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you to everybody who's Elite Ninja here. You guys are taking advantage of the Discord. I see that there's a lot more activity on the Discord. There's a lot more people talking about gaming and stuff like that. There's a lot more people getting into various different things. So thank you guys so much for the support, whether you're on Patreon, whether you're on um, Twitch Prime, or whether you're on um, here. I appreciate all of you guys. Seriously, thank you guys so much. But let's keep it going. We are almost at the dream. We are almost there. We wanted to get to 250 Elite Ninja. I wanted to try to get to it by the end of March. It might be tough, but we still have a number of days to get there. We still are at, um, we still have one more week, essentially, um, or pretty much a week and a day to see if we can get to 250. 250 Elite Ninja, we are 30 away, that is not too bad, that, that'll, that'll be a little bit of a tough, a tall task, and of course I'm going to have to stream, you know, and make sure that we get that, but we're definitely going to hit some, uh, we're definitely going to do some, like, extended streams uh, throughout this week, um, and next week to see if we can hit that 250 goal by the end of March, and then April, May, June, by the time that E3 rolls around those three months, we want to see if we can get another 250, doubling our previous that we had for the past, you know, two, three, two years plus, so, See if we can do it. We're definitely moving at a good pace with that new um, tier. So please make sure you guys check that out. We got a brand new tier for you guys. If you're hesitant on the Elite Ninja program, make sure you check it out. $1.99 does get you into our Discord, gets you into our all of our stuff that we do, our gameplay sessions, uh, Animal Crossing, Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, um, gets you emotes. We're going to have a bunch of cool custom emotes. I'm going to commission somebody to get that done. And we have a lot of new emote slots that are popping up. I'm actually checking uh right now because like you can actually do it pretty quick and um i would do it myself but for some reason dude emotes like i can't youtube emotes like it won't let me i can't do it for some reason so right now we actually have we have three more 18 emote slots uh we have 15 emotes activated we have 18 available to us and um if we get to 250 excuse me um let's see here the next emote slot will be at 19. So, or nine, we need 19 emojis to get to, um, or actually, wait a minute, no. We need five new Elite Ninja to get another emote slot. So, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool um, and when, it come down, when it comes down to it. So, yeah, we have three extra emote slots, and then we have, um, if we get um, another five more members, we'll have another emote slot. So, we'll have four. We'll have four extra ones um, if we get to, like, 224. So, good stuff, um, and we'll have a bonus stream as well. So, all right, guys, um, let's go ahead and let's get into uh, shout outs. So if you're here in the chat, you want me to say hi, feel free to say hi, and I'll be more than happy to say hi back to all my lovely Elite Ninja here, um, all to all my lovely Elite Ninja. So let's see, let's check it out. Chain Lightning, so what's up, OJ? Super Nintendo is the best Nintendo console for me. All right, sounds good. I love the Super Nintendo too. That was my previous favorite uh, console as well, which we'll get into. Uh, we'll get into all that too. 
Um, let's see here. Ms. and Mr. Gaming is here. Welcome. Party Man is here as well. Mo Cats is here. What's good, Mo Cats? Uh, Blanket Six is here. What's good? Dave G is here. Reggie Fiza May is here. Um, Starboy is here as well. Andre Wine is here. Shout out to the Roundtable member Andre Wine. And thank you for the continued gifts. A lot of you guys are amazing. You guys are sending me gifts. Where's my phone at? Sorry. I'll be right back. I need my phone. Emergencies. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> I need to see my phone. <laughs> I've secured my phone. I got to make sure that I have it just in case if my, my wife calls. If I don't pick up, my wife gets, uh, she gets, uh, she gets, uh, she gets, she gets a bit spicy. She gets a bit spicy if my, <laughs> if, if she calls and I don't pick up or I don't at least send a message telling her that I'm streaming. Um, all right. Let's see here. Um, Extreme Bagel is here. Venom Snake. What's good? Uh, good. Uh, Katana Riku. Katana Riku is here because he cannot play he cannot play Fantasy Star. Um, yo, Bevan Mario with the two Canadian dollars. And he says, doing my first donation to help you, OJ. Thank you so much, Bevan Mario. I appreciate that. And Bevan, check this out, bro. You are the top stream ninja. Your first donation, you're actually on the top stream ninja board, man. Thank you so much. And also stream Hokage as well. You guys give some love, respect, and emotes to Bevan Mario. Thank you for helping out the Elite Ninja stream. I appreciate it. Not required, but it's definitely appreciated. So thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you for the two, Bevan Mario, and thank you for supporting the stream, man. Your viewership is very valuable, though, bro. Even if you can't help, or whatever the case is, or whenever you do, it doesn't matter. Your your viewership is awesome, so thank you, man. Um, let's see here. Um, Slim Jim, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate that. Welcome to the Elite Ninja Village. Shout out to Fire Nation boys. All right, hold up. Let me see here. David T is here as well. Monado Mario is here. Starboy is here. Fourth the fourth. For the fourth, what's good, man? Welcome, tenth gen. The big man is here. Shout out to Elite Ninja, tenth gen. Day, uh, Jay, Dave, even in got ninjas here. Let's go. Thank you so much, uh, Poppy. Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the Fire Nation. Thank you so much. Thank you for following. You guys should be able to come in about ten minutes or so. Give it a little bit of time. Um, Deadlock Seven is here. What's good, man? Yeah, total. You know what? I heard about that in the UK. Total lockdown. Um, and I heard that Liam Robinson, um, you know, we've collaborated with him before on like the, uh, the spawn cast, uh, you know, unseen 64, apparently he has some symptoms and he might have, and he's isolated himself. So, you know, I'm praying for everybody over there in the UK, man, hopefully, hopefully things can get better for you guys, but yeah, you guys are in pretty, pretty bad lockdown. So not good, not good. Just stay safe, stay inside, stay safe. MTY 1983, my boy, George, what's good, man? Welcome. Down South player. 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 What's good, man? Uh, MTY, Dior Wilson, TH3, what's good? The RBM Venom. I'm just going to call you Venom. Venom, what's up, man? What's good? I know it's pretty late, guys. I'm sorry for starting up so late. I just, I was just tired and I was just resting up and I've been trying to rest and just kind of get, uh, get stuff done because tomorrow morning I'm going to be working I'm going to be working a lot. And then I got to, I got to do some babysitting tomorrow too. So, uh, so yeah, so direct tomorrow. No, the direct is today. It's today. The direct is today. Uh, Jeremiah, it's today. We're going to do the direct right now. We're doing the direct right now, baby. Let's see here. Starboy, <laughs> Welcome. Uh, let's see here. Psycho pie. What's good. Kenyatta Ali. Shout outs to Kenyatta. My boy. Welcome. Um, Katana Riku. Once again. Um, yeah, Canada's lockdown as well. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, anybody else that I miss? Uh, let's do, uh, what's up, man? Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. J2 blue is here. What's good. Jake, uh, J2 blue and Jake and Papa Jake is here as well. Mark M is here. What's good. Venom snake. Oh, we have, we have a RBM venom or our, and we have a venom snake here. All right. So we got two venoms. Rizal Boon. Yo, thank you so much for the, uh, subscription. Appreciate that. Welcome. To the Elite Ninja Village. Thank you for subscribing. Um, Joseph Tripp, Cesar uh, Pardia. What's up, man? Welcome. Uh, Bryson Warden. What's good, man? Um, yeah, those homework. I just don't like doing home workouts, man. Like, I just, like, I did a workout outside of my backyard, and I was just like, man, this sucks. I want to go to the gym. Um, let's see. Artist Akira is here. What's good, Artist Akira? Welcome to the stream. Shout outs. Oh, snap. Yo. Blanket with the California smash! Yo, we haven't seen Young All Might in a while. Let's
Let's go. Blanket with the 30. Oh, 3 oh. Let's go. Thank you so much, Blanket with the 30. Yo, hit us with that California smash, my boy. Uh, just make sure you have your face mask on when you hit us with that California smash. Michael Willington, what's up, man? And uh, Blanket says, can you play Path of the Hero King from Fire Emblem Fates? Absolutely. Thank you for that $30 donation. That does make you the top stream ninja, my man, Blanket. My dude, one of the high Ambu elite ninja here in the village. I appreciate the support, my boy. Um, let me get your name up here first. Remember, promptness. You know what I'm saying? We prompt. We prompt on here. We got to do things with the quickness. You know? What? You know? Um, yo, Zilla times two with the Joe. Joe with the 10. And he says, long time. A uh, long time since I added uh, more to the stash. Uh, what's up, OJ? What's up, Zilla times two? My boy. Thank you so much for the support on the channel, man. You've been a longtime supporter, so I appreciate that, man, Zilla. And hopefully you're doing okay. Hopefully you and your fam are doing okay. But you guys give some love to Blanket6 and also the Zilla Times 2. My boy, Zilla, if you got some video game music you want me to play, feel free. Blanket, let's get your track going right now, all right? Let's see here. So Fire Emblem, uh, Path to the Hero King. Path to the Hero King from Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates. All right. This is a great track. This track is really good. I love this track. Um, uh, we're probably not gonna play Animal Crossing tonight because I have to go to sleep early. So probably no Animal Crossing tonight. Probably no Animal Crossing tonight. Although I, I do have to change this to like 225 or something. Um, so hold up. <clears throat> Bonus stream. Plus, no Animal Crossing uh, tonight. But don't worry. Animal Crossing and much more will, will return very, very soon. Very, 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 very soon. I would play Animal Crossing tonight, though. But I, I just started up a little bit too late. If I would have started up like two hours ago, I would have done it. But yo, shout out to Zilla Times 2 um, and also Blanket. Thank you for the support. Uh, Dank, Dank, uh, Meme Center X, also Juice Man Von, Party Man, thank you guys all so much for being, I appreciate all of the Elite Ninja, uh, Roundtable members, Ambu, I appreciate you guys, thank you for coming out to the stream, um, Arco Zeno, there's just a lot of people in here, sorry guys, there's like, we got like 150, we're not even done with shoutouts yet, and we already have like 160 people, so there's just a lot, I'm trying to, trying to process it all, in, process it all in, boys, let's see here, yo, what's up, Casper? Hey, man, shout-outs, dude. Shout-outs, Casper. Keep safe, bro. Keep safe. Nimrod Gamer, what's up, man? Welcome. Um, from Port Hey, shout-outs to Portugal, man. Hopefully, you guys are doing okay. I know things are a bit rough there as well. So just stay safe, stay inside, um, and hopefully these governments actually help us with this stuff, man. Um, let's see. Brian Rollins, what's good, man? Welcome. Juan Hernandez says, yo, where's the direct announcement? The direct announcement is you missed it. It was yesterday. We already had the, the, the direct already happened. The direct already happened. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, you guys hit that like button. Almost 3 a.m. Stay up. Stay up. Get some coffee. Stay up, Zeno. We need you. The RBM Venom says, we, we are Venom. <laughs> he is he is Snake. <laughs> we are Venom. <laughs> I used to be able to do that way better venom's voice i'm actually a huge venom fan but that voice hurts my throat like hell so i stopped doing it um let's see dave g but thank you so much to rbm venom thank you for the dollar 99 man i appreciate the support i really do thank you so much <laughs> i appreciate it uh animal crossing is dangerous it's a progression system that gets a few minutes into a uh, into hours yeah yeah seriously seriously it does it does what would, you, what would you rate my Venom name or my Venom my Venom voice? I'd probably give it about a six. Uh, uh, out of a ten, I'd probably give it about a six, a five or six. But I used to be able to do it so much better. But it really hurts your throat. Like I don't understand. They have to they have to digitally modify his voice because no real voice actor can speak like that for any extended period of time. I don't know. Or maybe 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 he just has a few different lines and that's it. Because that Venom's voice really hurts your throat. Um. Yeah, I already saw that Peter stuff. Who cares? I'm not giving them any attention. Outside of what I already gave them on Twitter. Uh, nobody cares about them. Let's see here. Um, they haven't even told us what's, what's happening regarding our pay. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Well, because the government can't think of a stimulus pack. At least here in the U.S., they can't think of a stimulus package. 
6.5, okay. Solid 6.5 out of 10. Solid. Um, TH3 says, also, I went to uh, Tarantula Island last night and caught 25 of... Oh, nice. Sounds good. Deadlock7 says, uh, yes, nearly 3 a.m., but lockdown, but no rush, so I got to sleep. Uh, I am uh, up late anyway. All right. Good, good. Uh, this David cast David Keith for Venom. They should. They should. They should do it. They should do it. They should do it. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Um, who did I miss? Did I miss anybody in terms of shout outs? Chuba, Chuba Cabras here. What's up, Chuba? Welcome to the stream. I did not even see Chuba's name roll through. Let me see. Shout outs. Hopefully, I got everybody. If I missed you, let me know. Let me know in the chat. Brian, Brian Drain. Hey, no problem. Says, world's getting crazy. Thanks for the stream, bro. Uh, gotta try to relax watching something better than panic news. Yeah. Let me just say this, guys. Do not watch the news. Do not watch the news. What? All you gotta do, if you've got smartphones, install one of these. Install the news app. When you swipe, when, usually mine, it's like when you swipe over, like on the main page, you swipe over and you can just, and it customizes your news feed. Just get one of these. Otherwise, if you watch news on TV, or you, it's just it's just going to be panic news all day. If you need updates on what's happening in your local area, it's in print news too, okay? So just that's what I look at. If there's any new cases of CV or anything, that is much less jarring, and you'll still get all your information that you need. Just install that app and just, just do that. Or if you don't have it already installed, get one. They're on most smartphones. Do not watch the news because it's just... It's just panic and finger pointing all day, especially here in the U.S. One party blaming the other party, arguing a bunch of million, millionaires and rich people that can't can't think of a damn thing to do to help the uh, the people in our biggest time of need. A bunch of idiots that can't do anything. Don't 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 watch these fools. You know what I'm saying? Like this this is proven, 100% proven that the government. Doesn't matter who is there. They're idiots. All of them. I can't stand them. You know? Like, so don't watch that crap. Um, do not watch. Don't watch any political channels. Don't watch any of them. Install that crap on your phone. And if there's something important, it'll pop up. Um, don't don't sit there and watch that. In my opinion, just that's just me. That's just me. Um, I'm not, I'm not watching none of that stuff. I just have anything that I need to know is on there. Um, or I can look it up myself. I don't need to watch that crap. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that'll be that. That'll be the end of that. No, it's no political stuff. It has nothing to do with political. I'm talking about the people, what the people need in this time. And you got a bunch of blundering idiots that can't figure out anything. That are sitting there letting people die. I have no respect, zero respect for any of them. Doesn't matter what affiliation. I have zero respect for any of them anymore. This. Prove to me. I have no respect. None. They're sitting back and they're watching American people die. And they're not doing anything. They're doing nothing. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that. Uh, moving on. Um, they don't. They don't do them, cats. They really don't. This proves it. This this, this proves it. But anyway. Um, we're going to move on. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, we are going to move on. We're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about this next right here, guys. And blanket, thank you for the uh, the music, man. That that the path of the hero king is awesome from Fire Emblem Fates. So I do appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I do. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, guys, no political stuff here, guys. No political stuff. Don't worry about it. Uh, we don't need to name any names. Let's just know that these people they're not looking out. Let's look out for each other. All right. Let's look out. Let's look out for each other. Let's not let's not name any names. There's no need. Um, all right, so moving on to the next topic here, guys. We've got Nintendo, favorite Nintendo systems. Favorite Nintendo systems of all time. I wanted to talk about this because to me, I already thought once Fire Emblem Fates came, or not Fire Emblem Fates, Fire Emblem Three Houses came out, the Switch was my favorite Nintendo system of all time. You know, uh, the Switch was my favorite uh, Nintendo system of all time, and I don't care about Animal Crossing. I'm not covering review bombing anymore. I'm I'm done covering that crap. I'm never gonna cover it again, um, unless I have to. So I don't care. Um, but anyway, favorite Nintendo systems of all time. We are starting for me. I think I have like my top three, and my top three. I mean, obviously, there's like the classics, right? You have like the Nintendo. That that's what started it. Sometimes you have to just kind of put it there. But for me, my favorite Nintendo system of all time is the Switch 
And the reason why it's the Switch is because it has literally everything. It has the Holy Grail, the Trinity for me. It has Xenoblade, Smash Brothers, and it has Zelda. Xenoblade, Smash Brothers, Zelda, and um, uh, uh, Xenoblade, Smash Brothers, Zelda, and uh, and Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. So that was four games. But it has the Trinity. Fire Emblem with it, or you can be swapping in with, um, you know, with anything else. But either way. But yes, I absolutely love those three, those four franchises. Zelda, Xeno, Smash, um, you know, and it has all that. Fire Emblem. It has all those, my, my, my top. It has Bayonetta. I love Bayonetta. So it's just all good. Let me get some donations right here. Um, let's see here. Uh, can you play Kirby Dreamland Smash theme twice? Um, I can play it uh, once <laughs> since you did one donation. I can play it once, so I can play that for you once. So thank you so much for the. Oh, actually no, I can't play it twice. You did a donation before. Sorry, I'm being stupid. Slap me. Um, yeah, I can play it twice for you, the uh, RBM Venom. Sorry about that. Um, and also Juice Man Vaughn donated two dollars. Says between heaven and earth. Absolutely. What's up, Poppy? How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome, 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 all. Sorry, I'm gonna try to keep up with everybody. I know, like it's going, it's going quick. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry that the, the chat's going quick. There's a lot of people here. The chat's more active than usual tonight. I'm getting a lot of messages per minute. So sorry. Let me try to keep up with everything. Let me get this music, though. Um, make sure we stay prompt on music. Um, Kirby uh, Dreamland theme. Or Gir Kirby Dreamland Smash theme. Um, how about this? Uh, we will play... <clears throat> Dreamland? Okay. From the Okay, hold up, no. Okay, the song's about two minutes and thirty seconds. I found an extended version, we'll play that for five minutes, so it'll essentially be it'll be like we play it twice, okay? Uh Bryson Warden, he says, Can we get some melee a menu too? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bryson. I'll I'll get that for you. Thank you for the two dollar donation, my boy. Appreciate that. Uh, Poppy, I did acknowledge you, my boy. I did. Slim Jim, what's good, man? Welcome. How are you doing today? How are you guys doing, Twitch boys? Um, and no, 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 I don't, I don't do any of that. Uh, zero, no, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Not at all. Um, let's see here. Me World, Me World 2 says, can you play FE Binding Blade beneath a new light? Absolutely, I'll get that going for you. Thank you for the $2 donation. I appreciate that. Thank you uh it's poopy not poppy okay poopy got you got you uh let's see artist akira uh says what's up man what's up artist akira um all right uh he says you're the man i've uh, been getting me through this stuff with your daily streams in the evening keep it up thank you so much bryson i appreciate that shout out to me me world i'll get that going for you so let's hear about you guys' favorite nintendo systems no mr t cosplay or anything or cosplay or anything like that let's hear about some systems boys um the garma gamer uh the garma gamers what's up man welcome uh, Brennan says, my first console was the GameCube when I was four. Oh, wow, I just realized how old I am. You were four when the GameCube came out. <laughs> I was like, I was like in college. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I was like past college. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ashoka Tano says, uh, hold up. Xeno fan, what's up, Xeno fan? Ashoka Tano says, uh, for me, Switch represent, uh, replaces the GameCube as my favorite Nintendo system. Just the amount of JRPGs is phenomenal, and uh, it's only going to get better. The GameCube, to me... It's not, exactly, the GameCube to me wasn't the GOAT, because the reason why it's not the GOAT because it didn't have enough RPGs. The GameCube was really good. It, it's like, it can be almost considered the GOAT. The GameCube had a lot of cool stuff for it, but the problem is that Nintendo had no, they were coming off the N64, Nintendo had no real RPGs, you know, outside of like Fire Emblem. They had Fire Emblem, which was great. Um, they had bots and Kaitos. They did have some RPGs on there. They had Skies of Arcadia Legends. There were third RPG. There, there were like third-party RPGs, and there were for some first-party RPGs, but they didn't have enough at, to me, at least, because they didn't have as much as like the the, the the Super Nintendo. So I, I've always held the Super Nintendo in higher regard than the GameCube. But the GameCube is really good, though. Like to me, the Super Nintendo and the GameCube were like tied. They were like. I'd always put the game, I'd always put the Super Nintendo just a little bit higher, but there'd be times where I think like, the GameCube was higher. But the Super Nintendo just had crazy Super Nintendo RPGs. You know, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, uh, Secret of Evermore, Final Fantasy VI. I mean, they've had some of the best games of all time. You know, on top of, on top of having like, Super Metroid. 
You know, GameCube had Metroid Prime, which was great, but I like 2D Metroid more than 3D Metroid. So there's always, like, whenever I stack it up one by one, I always see, like, the Super Nintendo edges out some of the franchises. You even look at, like, something like Super Mario World, for example. I like Super Mario World more than I like Super Mario Sunshine, you know? So for me, the Super Nintendo always edges it out, but the GameCube was really good, though. I always have GameCube, like, third, you know? Um, second or third before the Switch came out, at least. Um, so, yeah. Um... Let's see here. Uh, it's very hard for me to pick a favorite because each console has a good chunk of games that I like from them. Yeah, I know it's hard, dude. It's not easy. Um, paper. Yeah, that's true. GameCube had Paper Mario. You're right about that. GameCube had Paper Mario. That's a great RPG. You're right about that. I'm, but I'm just saying, like, Super Nintendo had way more RPGs from a first, from a third-party standpoint. The amount of RPGs that had Nintendo didn't have as many first-party RPGs, right? But they had so many third-party RPGs. I mean, you talk about like Lufia, Illusion of Gaia. They literally had the weight of Square Enix behind them. Like all, like imagine you see how Square Enix supports the the PS4. That's how the Super Nintendo used to be supported from Square Enix. Like, and maybe even more. So think about that for a second. Imagine if all of Square Enix's big RPGs came to the Switch. You know, they have a lot of RPGs, but imagine if everything Square Enix does. All the big RPGs are all on Switch. Kind of like how they're all on PS4. Now, times that by two, maybe, and then put that on the Super Nintendo. Like, Square Enix put everything on the Super Nintendo. Everything. Everything that they did was on the Super Nintendo. You know, it was, it was nuts. It was crazy. Like, there was... They didn't skip a beat. Everything was on the Super Nintendo, you know? Um, so, yeah, man. Um, it was great. It was great. Uh, do Nintendo handhelds count in this? Um, I mean, you can add... I mean, we're talking about home consoles, I think. What did I put in the title? I put consoles. So, well, but I mean, but yeah, you could put you could put handhelds. Why not? You could put handhelds. The only handheld that I would put in, in anywhere near the conversation for me would be the 3DS. To me, the 3DS was, um, was up there because it's backwards compatible. You can play DS games. And of course, 3DS was awesome. You know, it had a lot of great... You know games as well fire emblem so the 3ds yeah you can but i don't know i don't like the 3ds more than i like the switch you know and i don't like the 3ds more than i like the super nintendo and i i might put the 3ds on like on par with the gamecube but, or maybe a little bit below it so no handhelds to me make it past like in my top three for if you were to include handhelds but i know a lot of people love the ds the ds is probably like a lot of you guys' favorite nintendo system of all time or whatever you know um all right, so great music there. Thank you so much to RBM Venom. Uh, we played that track for you five minutes plus. So let's go ahead and get this next track going here, and that is Juice Man Fawn's Between, Between Heaven and Earth from Fire Emblem. This is a great track as well. We're getting the old school here, Fire Emblem. Um, Chain Lightning says, NES, uh, Super Nintendo had a crazy third-party support. Look at Capcom, Konami, Square. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. A lot of you guys didn't live during the Super Nintendo time, so it's tough for you guys to fathom what it was like for nintendo it's just hard because um, it doesn't matter if you go back and play the games or anything like that no 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 i don't i don't care about all you guys that watch scott the laws and he plays the old school games and you think that you know old school you know he has to research because he wasn't alive you know the only people that know the greatness of the super nintendo is are the people that were truly alive during that time and not you know tainted by like other systems and going back and playing them in virtual console completely different atmosphere um, and it's hard because most of the, most of the kids, if you're in your 20s right now, you know, you probably didn't play Super Nintendo like that because you probably played PlayStation or N64 or other relevant systems, you know. So, so yeah. Um, let's see. He says, "Okay, boomer. Hey, look, I'm just telling you guys the truth. It's the truth. You guys, you, you wouldn't understand it. You know, you wouldn't understand unless you were there. Unless you were there." Um, you can research and you can play the games and you can do all that, but it gets clouded by what's coming out today. It's easily overlooked. If you were playing it at its time, that was the top of the class, you know? Um, let's see here. Um, I wish I was able to play older games back then. Well, it's okay. Everybody has their set time period to live in. So I'm not trying to shame people who are younger, you know? Um, and that's why I want to get you guys' opinions on like what you guys played. It's not like I'm saying, oh, well, you know, you guys didn't play the Super Nintendo, so that means your opinion's wrong. No, you can still like the, the Switch the most. Heck, I mean, I grew up... I grew, dude, I played the NES back when it first came out, you know? Um, and, like, I, Switch is my favorite. And I played the NES... I, I grew up in that time period, too. But just, like, to, to know the greatness of the Super Nintendo, which was my favorite Nintendo system for decades, right? For decades and decades, that was my favorite system because of what the system represented, you know? It was super in every single regard, man. It, it, it wasn't only, like 
technologically super, super it was like the controller was innovative believe it or not you look at the super nintendo controller um let me grab one let me grab a let me grab one here so here is a super nintendo controller here's an actual super nintendo controller actually no it's the it's the whatever one but here's a super nintendo controller back then like if you look at this controller now you wouldn't think this was innovative you're like what is so innovative about this controller like what what what, what makes this controller innovative but what made it innovative at the time shoulder buttons systems didn't have these believe it or not systems only had like two buttons like on the front and like a joystick or something like that you know like they didn't have um they didn't have face buttons like this if we're like the main home systems they didn't have shoulder buttons like you know start and select like the, the modern form of a controller that wasn't a little block you know we have blocky controllers atari had like a little block and a stick you know sega had like a block you know, and Super Nintendo came out with the modern design for a controller. Four face buttons, start and select, D-pad, two shoulder buttons. This was like the basis for so many controllers going forward in the in, in the in the future. And that's what was so innovative about it. Because back in 1991, we were like, what is this? Yo, like, what are those? <laughs> we we had no idea. We're like, what are those, all those buttons? What are these top buttons? Like, shoulder buttons? Like, how do you play? Like, we didn't know. It was something so new back then man like it was something so new so people were playing atari like where you had like one button you know you had like a joystick and one button that was it people were playing that in the 80s you know and everything or in television people didn't have super nintendo like we, we did that that looks so futuristic you know and that was so innovative and so many systems built off that base the super nintendo controller is the basis for modern systems you know it really is um yeah the ps1 controller is basically it is it is it is for real man so i mean that's that's the coolest thing about the super nintendo how old am i i'm 45 i'm turning 46 um in april uh brian rollins donated four dollars and 99 cents and says for uh for me switch gba super nintendo okay i love my cube 3ds and nes but those three are my uh are my loves can you play drill dozer art museum absolutely absolutely i'll play that after we got a lot of music to do um so we are going to we play this for four minutes so we're gonna go ahead and um stop it right here we're gonna get the next track thank you for the 499 brian i appreciate the support my uh my dude and uh yeah man those are some good picks too i mean i, I wasn't as huge on the gba my hands were too big for a lot of the gba stuff but i do like it so, uh metroid fusion was amazing on there metroid zero mission amazing on the gba and we're playing those games a lot when i was in college and everything so yeah man um all right let's see here next up is uh melee melee menu menu two theme all right all right all right thank you so much for the support bryson <laughs> um all right Let's see here. OJ, you're the best underrated. You should have a million subscribers. Thanks for you. Thanks for putting out so much content. Uh, I don't know. I should have a million subscribers if I have a million subscribers. I mean, I, I don't deserve a million subscribers because I don't have it. So um, I don't even have 100,000 subscribers. So I get what I deserve, and I'm happy to have you guys here at the Elite Ninja Village, and I'm happy to have the support that you know that you guys give me. So um, I'm not going to complain. Um, I'm just happy to have what I do have, man. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that, though. Thank you so much, Chris Scott Games. I appreciate that, dude. Uh, um, let's see here. Aiden Quince is a Wii U. Uh, yes, I'm one of those. Can you play Wii? Can, uh, can play Wii games and upscale them beautifully. Best virtual console home, and you get the exclusives. I think the Wii had a better virtual console, right? The Wii definitely had a better virtual console, but Wii U's virtual console, it was there. But Wii U's really your favorite Nintendo home console of all time? Really? <laughs> is it really? Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. You'll hit 100k in due time, OJ. I've been noticing the growth the past several months. We'll see. Um, let's see here. Holy crap, what are you drinking? Only 45. I need some of that. Uh, I just have a low-risk lifestyle. I don't, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't, well, I drink water. Don't do drugs. Use beauty products, skin, all that good stuff. Um... During my youth, uh, while well, Super Nintendo Teens was GameCube and the Switch is number one. Okay, and believe me, it was the new peak of Nintendo gaming. Nice. Nice. 
Um, trying to see what uh, Twitch boys are saying. The great thing about the Switch is that they keep just porting games over to it. Eventually, the library will be even uh, will be everything will be everything to the extent. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yo, shout outs, Carl. Some games look downright ugly on the Wii. Even the HDMI adapter. Yes, the Wii U. Uh, followed by Switch. I, I wait. How is the Wii? How is the Wii U above the Switch? When Switch literally has all the some of like all the best games from the Wii U. I don't get that. Um, Jumpmon donated one dollar. There's no Fire Emblem game on the Wii U. There's no. There's no. <laughs> I can't. I can't vibe with that pick, bro. There's no Fire. There's no main Fire Emblem game on that system. There's no main Fire Emblem game on that system. <laughs> I can't. Um, Jumpmon donated a dollar and says, for me, the GBA, 3DS, GameCube, and N64. Can you play Sp uh, Spyro's Season of Ice, Autumn Fairy Home? Home. All right. All right. I can do that. No problem. Um, end of the year, RX Gaming. End of the year. In terms of officially. Um, maybe. We'll see. It might be early next year. Not really sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, Switch is better than Wii U, but my, many people... Like the Wii U, as far as functionality and having the dual screen simulation, many people. Who's many people? Many people didn't even buy the system. So I mean, who who are these many people that you think of, that that are that are out there? I mean, yeah, there's some people. I've said there's a handful of people, but many. If so many, if so many people like the Wii U, then they would have bought the Wii U. Why is the Wii U the worst selling home console, main home console of Nintendo of all time? Like, people always talk. Oh yeah, people love it. People loved it. No, okay. Well, where where were all these people at when I was sitting here? Fighting for my life, trying to talk about the Wii U, trying to get people to buy the Wii U. Where were you guys at? I'm fighting for my life when it comes to the Wii U. Y'all, y'all, y'all playing PlayStations. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> hey, LJ, my favorite has to be the Wii. Probably the most amount of quality exclusive uh, games, both first and third party, unmatched. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. Quality? Hmm. Hmm. There's some good quality for sure. There's some good quality for sure. Definitely for sure some good quality. But I'd have to say the only thing with the Wii is that the Fire Emblem game, um, Radiant Dawn is nowhere near as good as uh, Three Houses. That's what I would say. And there's no Bayonetta. There's no Bayonetta. Um, and Smash Brothers Brawl, to me, is one of the weakest Smash Brothers games out there um, in terms of what I like. So that's the only issue. Does have Xenoblade. Does have, uh, like, you know, does have a lot of really high quality games. <laughs> Uh, the last, uh, the last story, uh, you know, um, Pandora's Tower, Xenoblade, Mario Galaxy games. You're right about that. The Wii is definitely good. Um, it has a, the virtual consoles great. There's a lot of great stuff about the Wii. I just don't know if I'd put it up. I mean, I, I for me at least. But no, I, I can see why somebody would say that the Wii is their favorite. But to me, so many games were ruined by forced motion control. Like I have to like there wasn't the options that other systems give you. Uh, forced motion control ruin to me ruins some games. To me, absolutely ruins some games or just made games uncomfortable to play. Um, T Money donated five dollars and says Forensic Files, V8 Splash, and Animal Crossing. And <laughs> in the words of Cube, it was a good day. Can I get a Press Garden Act Zone Two from from Sonic Mania? Thanks. You know what? First of all, that sounds like an absolutely amazing day. Forensic Files, V8 Splash, and Animal Crossing. Dude, that's like that. I did that. I did. You know what I did today, T Money? I did Forensic Files, um, Diet Cherry Seven Up, Diet Cherry Seven Up, and Animal Crossing. That was my <laughs> that and, and a little bit of French bread. That was my day today. Before I took a little bit of nap before I started the stream. So mine was very similar to yours. Very similar. You guys should try that. But the only and I had some food. But the only problem, ugh, like I was, I'm watching some of the old episodes of Forensic Files, and you know, in the old episodes, like the ones in like season one, two, three, and four, they show the actual like crime scenes. Like they they don't edit them, so you see the maggots, you see the flies, you see the like the 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 decomposition. In the later seasons, they edit it. But in in the first few seasons, they don't edit it at all. So it's just kind of like you know a little bit. But I was all right. I held it down and I just looked away and just listened. But yeah, I was watching the episode. Okay, anyway, I'm getting too deep. I'm getting too deep here. Anyway, T Money, thank you for the five dollar donation. We'll get your music going in just a bit. Also, Nintendo Power, uh, thank you for the two dollars. Didn't um, didn't Nintendo say Fire Emblem Awakening get Switch port? Nintendo never said that. No, Nintendo never said that. Um, but all right, let's go and get this next music going here. Um, we've got. Oh man, we got a lot of music. Goodness gracious. Um, Fire Emblem Binding Blade. Fire Emblem Binding Blade. Fire Emblem 
Binding Blade. Uh, new light. New light. All right. Let's get this music going. We're going to have a lot of music tonight, boys. Um... All right, let's see here. Uh, the Virtual Boy outside the Wii U, no it didn't. Switch, GameCube, N64, Super Nintendo 3DS. All right, sounds good, Let's have it. Um, so yeah, it's quite shocking how the Wii can read the whole Xenoblade game. Uh, it's more, not about the Wii, it's about how it was designed. It's about how it was designed. Not, not necessarily the system itself, but how this, the game itself was designed. It's more testament to how they designed the game around the hardware than the hardware itself, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, they showed the actual body, like, they showed the crime scene photos from Forensic, like, in the early, before, now they recreate them and they blur them, they show the photos, but they, but they blur them out, they don't show decomposition and all that, but in the early episodes, bro, they just, they just showed you, like, oh, here you go, here's what it looks like, it was pretty disgusting, the episode that I watched, it was pretty nasty, um, Nintendo, um, can I send you my friend code, um, what, what tier are you here, are you joining tier or higher? What pledge are you? Um, and then you can send me the friend code. What pledge are you? I need to know, are you tuning in or are you joining in or higher? Um, let's see here. Uh, OJ, would you agree that despite the childish exterior of Switch games, that at the average demographic Switch is 20 to 35 years old? Would I? Oh, it's not about agree or disagree. Nintendo says that's the average. The average demographic for the Switch is right around, yeah, uh, 16 to 30 something. That, that's the most people that use the Switch is that age base. So yeah. So that's not even like, it's not like a, like a question. It's that's, that's the, that's the range of most people that own a switch or that buy a switch or that are excited about switch the most enthusiast gamers are in that age range somewhere between 20 to 38 in that range um so yeah um jonin kudo oh kudo okay that's you kudo i that's you changed your name all right yeah um are you on discord or how about this um tag me tag me on twitter and just let me know that it's you. I don't have my Switch here. I was playing Animal Crossing in my um, in the guest bedroom and watching Forensic Files and drinking cherry, Diet Cherry 7-Up. So my Switch is over there because I was, my, the Animal Crossing game is still on. Um, um, Switch, is, Switch is for kids. It's for kids. It's for adults. It's for anybody. Anybody can play Switch. Um, favorite system from Nintendo is the 3DS. It opened my world up to so many great uh, game franchises and it had DS backwards compatibility. Okay. Good stuff. Um... Yo, what's up, Birdman? Welcome. What's up, Xeno Emblem? Welcome. Yeah, switch. Um, make a Twitter. Okay, if you don't have a Twitter account, that's cool. You don't have to make a Twitter account to send me to send me your friend code. Um, just send me your, give me your friend code right now, and I'll write it down. I'll put it down right here on, on a piece of um, a notepad. So just give me your give me your friend code right now, and, and I'll write it down, and I'll add it later. Um, Morris Princes love the stream, OJ, but don't touch your eyes, bro. Rookie move. Um, why would I not touch my eyes? If I have an itch on my eye, I'm going to touch it. But I, I wasn't outside or anything, so I'm good. Um, let's see here. Uh, and I'm not a rookie when it comes to streaming. I've been streaming for years. Um, let's see here. But I don't see why <laughs> I'm not okay to touch my eye. I don't get it. Um, let's see here. Upgraded to Ambu. Yo, Blanket6. Thank you so much for the Ambu upgrade. Yo, let's go. Thank you so much. Blanket6 with the Ambu upgrade. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yo, what's up, B-Brash? Welcome, welcome. Shout out to you guys. Thank you. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support. <clears throat> um, let's see here. <clears throat> I had a package delivered from Play Asia. Feeling good so far? Nice, nice. Sounds good. Um, switches for everyone. In fact, I see more adults playing than kids. Yeah, it's for everyone. I mean, kids play, you know, more kids are using the Switch Lite, obviously. You know, but adults use the Switch Lite too. I mean, everybody it's for everybody, to be honest. But Nintendo's demographics in terms of who's actually playing the games, most of it is somewhere between 16 to like 38 in that range, you know? He means uh, because of uh, CO... If that's what he means, I, I, I didn't go outside today. I, I literally did not step outside. <laughs> so, um... There's no way that I could, I could have... I could have it. Now, if I was outside and then came back inside... Then yeah, then okay, yeah, don't but if you don't wash your hands and you don't clean yourself properly, then yeah, but I didn't go outside all day today. I took a shower in the morning. Alright, I wash my hands all the time. I've been do I did dishes earlier, so I've been using dishwasher soap. My hands are clean. Uh so there's no point there's no uh there's no third I mean I get maybe it's a joke, but the joke doesn't apply. Um, let's see here. 
Um, I think we had a new donation. Um, Bocats donated one dollar. Says, "Yo, GameCube all day," and then I think you linked a song for us. Okay, we'll get that going for just a bit. Thank you so much, Bocats, for the support. I appreciate it. Um, all right, let me get this switch friend code down. Seven five two seven 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 four six. Uh, one two zero four. All right. All right, I'll add you um, tonight. Um, Want to play new Animal Crossing? Okay, never mind. I'm reading my own stupid supermodel's message. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hey, KK is a Carthar Carthinkian? Anyway, I don't know how to say it right. Hey, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Charlie's gone. Yo, what's up, Charlie's gone? Welcome to the stream. Um, Nintendo, uh, no filter Nintendo podcast. Uh, man, kids are playing games like Call of Duty, FIFA, and all the Battle Royale games too. So those are for kids only now. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think at this point it doesn't matter. Kids play anything, you know? Um... <clears throat> Um, <laughs> y'all should be lecturing health stuff to me. Yeah, I mean, it's no, it's all good. It's all good. It's a stream, so of course, people are just gonna say stuff. I mean, he's probably just joking around. It was, it was just a joke, so it's all good. It's all good. It's no, no biggie. No biggie. No biggie. Um, Ian, Ian Sherry, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the Elite Ninja Village Fire Nation. Let's go. Um, it's K Carthink. Okay, Carthink. Carthink. Okay, gotcha. Um, Smash is fundamentally the same across all titles. Spam the buttons and pray button combos. Knock your opponent out and pray harder. They don't cheat uh, to save themselves. Barber, that you're that is completely wrong. That is 100 100 wrong. The theme of Smash Brothers, in terms of yes, four players or maybe even eight players all on a map, and then they get to knock them off of the screen or off the stage. That is the same. But the whole spam buttons and pray combos, knock your opponent out and pray harder. They don't cheat to save themselves. That is incorrect. That is someone who doesn't know how to play Smash trying to explain Smash to, to, to people who don't, also don't know how to play Smash. People who know how to play Smash know that you don't spam. You don't just smash buttons. There's actually uh, inputs and combos that you have to do that are of high level. And um, cheating, che I don't know what you're talking about cheating, but it's called edge guarding. Edge guarding that you want to make sure that you keep your opponent off the stage. There's various different edge guarding techniques that you can do. There's ledge trumping that you can do. There's all sorts of uh, techniques and fabric built into it. Um, so yeah, if you don't know how to play Smash, it seems that way that all the Smash games are the same, but if you do play Smash, they're actually very different. Melee is a very, very fundamentally, technically, what you can do. It's very different from any of the other Smash games. Anybody who plays Melee will tell you this. People that play Hardcore Melee, they will tell you. That's why Melee's still alive to this day. If Melee was the same as Smash Ultimate, or Smash Brawl, or Smash 4, or Smash Wii U, then people wouldn't still be playing Melee to this day. But it's the fact that it's so different. Brawl is different than even Smash Ultimate. Brawl is a very different game. You have tripping. You have weird flying that people can do. You have very different techniques and stuff that competitive players do in that. Smash 4 is kind of like the generic basis of Smash in terms of what it can do. Um, and kind of like a hybrid between Smash Ultimate kind of and what they did there and Smash Brawl. I mean, it's kind of hard to where to put Smash, Smash 4. And Smash 64 is like, it's like the start. It's like the beginning of it. There's some really wonky stuff in Smash 4 too. But they're definitely not mash buttons. That's definitely not what Smash Brothers is. If you mash buttons, uh, you're going to lose. You're going to lose every single time. You're not going to beat anybody good, that's for sure. But each game is definitely different. I'd say the games that are probably most alike would be... Probably out of all of them would be like Smash... Smash... Uh, Smash Brawl and maybe four or smash four and ultimate to a regards with all but ultimate is just it's hard to say that it's the same just because there's just so many more characters and so many more mechanics changes but i mean in terms of, it was built off of smash four so i'd probably say that but if you're good in smash four then you're probably good in ultimate or you can get good in ultimate whereas if you're good in brawl that doesn't mean you're going to be good in in smash four or smash ultimate you know or if you're good in melee you have that doesn't mean you're going to be good in smash four or smash brawl or smash ultimate so um, so yeah, just a little, 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 uh, you know, a little bit more info on that as somebody who's a competitive player, uh, myself. Um, all right, so let's go and get the next music going here. This Fire Emblem music has been going for a while. Uh, so Los Angeles Media Group donated $4 three minutes ago because I was ranting about S Super Smash Brothers. This is coming for Juice Boy, uh, coming, coming for Juice Boy. Let's see the top ninja keep up the good work. OJ Player Essence. Yo, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Los Angeles Media Group. He's one of the super Hokage here in the village. So thank you so much, Los Angeles Media Group. I appreciate it. 
um, I appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get this uh, next track going here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm going as fast. I know I'm behind on music and comments. I'm sorry. Um, oh, my God. I got so much music to play. <laughs> let's see here. Next up. I, I went too long on that last music. Um, let's see here. Uh, Drill Dozer. Drill Dozer. Art Museum. All right. This should be a good track. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I've already went to the new island and I've invited people over to mine, Chris. Uh, facts, I'm decent in ultimate but cannot play melee at all. I barely, <laughs> barely any brawl, yeah. Yeah, I'd say 64 melee are the closest from all titles. It's debatable. It's the it's debatable. It's debatable. Melee has way more tech though in 64 than though, dude. Like melee has so much more tech that just throws it off. You know, I don't know. Smash Four and Ultimate. Those are Smash Four and Ultimate. There's a there's an argument for Smash Four and Ultimate too. I think in terms of like the easiest to, like people that are generally good at Smash Four are good if, unless you're a Bayonetta main, then you're not good at Ultimate for the most. part. <laughs> Unless you're one of those bandwagon Bayonetta mains, you're probably not good at Ultimate, you know. Um, but most of the people that were good at Smash 4 are good at Ultimate, you know. So, so, so yeah. But no, I, I think I think there. I don't think you're wrong, Th3, with that thought process either. Do you recommend any Smash character for beginners in Ultimate? Any, um, any Smash character? Um, I'd probably say like a Fire Emblem character, uh, like Lucina. Um, I think Lucina is a great starting character, or even a character like Mario. Mario, Lucina, those are good. Those are very good for beginners. Lucina is good because you just, you just, you got a sword and you just hit people with the sword, you know. And she has good weight. She has good recovery. Um, pretty good speed. Very good knockback options. Good edge guarding tools. Uh, good her side B's. Good special moves with the uh, B moves. Um, counter. So I obviously like Lucina is probably one of the best starter characters to use, or Mario. Um, um, all right, let's see here. Smash 4 feels slow compared to Ultimate and 64 and Melee. It does. You're right, Jay Davey. You're right. It is. It does feel slow compared to those games. You're right. Um, you're right. Mac Mega donated $3 and says, my top three Nintendo game systems are Super Nintendo for the third. Second is the Switch. And number one, the 3DS. It has three Zelda games, three Fire Emblem games, two, a 2D Metroid game, Smash and Mario Kart. Virtual console and a DS library. And can you also play Smash Ultimate Roy's Hope, please? All right. Sounds good. I will definitely get that going for you. Yeah, you're right. 3DS has a lot. 3DS has a lot, man. It has a lot. It does have a lot. Um, let's see here. Um, I don't know. We got a bunch of messages being deleted, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, okay. Yeah, you deleted. Uh, just um, Gamer3333. Just use the abbreviation CV. All right. Use the abbreviation CV if you want to talk about it. I will read your a comment, though. Animal Crossing New Horizons is addictive and all uh, and what we need with all this CV going around. Absolutely, dude. You are right about that. I think it's definitely... That's why the game's blowing up, dude. People are, buy, people are buying this game. And tomorrow, we are going to get sales numbers in Japan. And tomorrow, we're going to get some other stuff. But sales numbers in Japan, this game is blowing up, man. It, it is blowing up. People are buying it at faster rates than Nintendo probably even anticipated. You know? Um... <clears throat> all right so let's get this next music going here guys thank you brian for the four dollars and 99 cents i appreciate your continued support on the channel i do appreciate you bro uh next up is spyro season of season of ice uh autumn fairy fairy home okay that sounds lovely um <laughs> okay all right here's this next music um, are Greninja or Krom any good? Um, Greninja and Krom are both good in, um, in Smash Brothers, but they're very technical characters to use. Well, Greninja is for sure. Krom, not as much, but Krom, you have to be technical offstage because Krom's recovery is bad. It's, it's, it's not like you can't get back to stage, but you definitely have to be somebody who knows how to play off the edge to get Krom back to stage because he's just, his, his up B is just, uh, just goes up and straight back down. And his uh, side recovery is not very good. His aerial movement's decent. Um, but yeah, Krom is... I would say Krom probably isn't for newcomers. Because 
you probably won't ever recover back to the stage against somebody who's better or somebody who knows how to edge guard at all. You'll, you'll get edge guarded and you'll 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 die with Krom almost every single time. So Krom's not very good. I think once you get the hang of things, maybe you can pick Krom, but Krom is difficult for newcomers because just getting back to the stage. Greninja, Greninja's good, but once you get technical character, you kind of have to do like a lot of down tilt confirms and stuff like that. Um, with Greninja, a lot of weird uh, jank hitboxes and stuff. You got to be able to space good, you know, with the snares and things like that. So not necessarily the best um, in terms for newcomers. Um, so let's see here. Um, all right. So I uh, keep the questions coming though, guys. Bike, bike or death? What's good, man? Welcome to the stream. How you doing today? Welcome. Um. Um, let's see here. Uh, Shulk is the most technical character in Ultimate, in my opinion. Shulk? Um, no, I don't think Shulk is the most technical. Um, I don't know. I would probably say... I'd probably say Snake is. I'd probably say Snake might be the most technical character. Um, or one of the most technical, for sure. I mean, Shulk definitely has some technicality, but I think Snake... The reason why Snake to me is more technical is because Snake you have to you have to you know the usage of the of the of the the C4, the Nikita, you know how Snake moves, his recovery, what he does. Like Snake seems to be like a lot more technical to me. The uh, the, the grenades, you know stuff like that. Snake is hard to use. He's very good, but he's very hard to use. Shulk is just switch Monados and hit people, and they even made Monado switching even better in this game because it's easier. A wheel comes up. So now you don't have to memorize the order of the Monados. Now you can just memorize the direction of the Monado. So it's almost like a quick... So they made Shulk easier to use from Smash 4 to Smash Ultimate. So maybe in Smash 4, maybe a bit more because you have to cycle. But in Smash Ultimate, you have a, you have like a wheel of Monado art. So it's easy and they're quick. He just goes... He, goes, he just switches to them really fast, you know? Uh, so you can switch to them faster. He's actually a bit easier to use. Um, I think Snake is just, uh, he's hes a character that's really good, but very technical to use with the grenades and the Nikita and the, the C4. Um, Peach is pretty technical too. <laughs> uh, I, mean, she, uh, I mean, you have to do float cancels and stuff like that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, that's true. Um, all right. So let's go and get this next music going here. Let's get this next music going. Um, and the next one is... Let's see here. Is Sonic Mania. Um, Garden. Press Garden Zone Act 2. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's not technical at all. He's just a big gorilla that hits you. Um, let's see here. Um, no, I don't have a Switch Online code, man. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Yeah, Shulk is better than Ultimate. Only problem is his up B is a little a little nerf. His up B is still good though. He still has the jump art, you know. Um, Game and Watch? Nah, Game and Watch isn't really technical. No, Game and Watch just has really good frame data. Like he has a little RNG built into him, but he's not really like technical. Like you can use Game and Watch and do just fine. He has a really good recovery. He has really good frame data. Game and Watch isn't technical at all, really. No, he's just RNG and stupid. Um. Who's better, Krom or Roy? Uh, it depends on who you talk to. I personally feel that um, that Krom is better, but there's uh, there's people that feel that Roy's better. But you know, I think I I, I think Krom, I think Krom's a bit better, but that's just me. Um, let's see here. The thing about Smash is that there are characters uh, there are characters easy to use but hard to master. Yeah. Uh, Roy, they're they're. There's not easier kills with Roy. Anything Krom can, anything Roy can do, Krom can do as well. And Krom has a balanced blade. Roy doesn't. So you have to be very, you have to be very close. Sometimes Roy's blade doesn't hit you, doesn't hit you flush. Krom's blade always hits you flush. So, in some respects, Roy, Roy might have a harder kill than uh, than Krom. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> nah, Krom, Krom can kill just as Krom can kill just as uh, fast as Roy. You guys just don't. You guys just don't see good Chrome players play. That's the thing. <laughs> you guys just don't. You don't see a lot of good because of the recovery. That's the problem. It's it's the recovery. But Chrome can destroy you just as fast as Roy can destroy you. And like I said, Chrome's blade is balanced. It's not. It's not. 
um, closer hilt tilt, uh, tilted on there. Um, so yeah. Um, the sword base is still better than Mark's Tipper. Bad, but we're talking about Chrom here. Chrom has a balanced blade. <clears throat> Um, but you guys just you guys just don't you guys don't see good Crom players. If you saw like Mr. R when he uses Crom, you would think that Crom is the best player in the game. <laughs> if you see his Crom, you would think that he's the best player. I've seen Mr. R destroy Roy players easy with Crom. Good Roy players with him. Roy is good. Don't get me wrong. I don't think there's really one that's really that you can truly say is better. I'm just giving my opinion. I think Crom is better, but Roy's definitely Roy has the results to back it up. Crom doesn't. So at the end of the day, Roy Roy has been in bigger spotlight than Krom has been. So I think we've only had like really a couple Kroms make it to some big tournaments, whereas Roy has won the one huge tournaments before. So so I don't have any problem with people saying uh, Roy in terms of things. So so yeah. Um, all right. Uh, my favorite Fire Emblem character is Lucina. Um, all right. So next up in terms of music is... Mocats has a pick here. We're going to go ahead and get that. Uh, yes, Bomberman. Bomberman is an assist. Bomberman is an assist trophy in Smash. I think he's a. I think he's a spirit too. Um, name five Super Nintendo games that you love that are not not Nintendo IP, not JRPG. Um, not Nintendo not IP, not JRPG. Ooh, that's gonna be tough. Um, pff, Super Nintendo, huh? Oh my God! Not not JRPGs and not Nintendo. That was what the Super Nintendo was. It was JRPGs and Nintendo. Um, dude, I can't even think of it. I'd have to actually sit down and like go through the games. Y'all name some good Super Nintendo games that are not that are not Nintendo IP or JRPGs. Uh, Bomberman, yeah, Bomberman. Um, that was one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Was Bomberman? Um, Super Castlevania. That was good, so that's another one. Super Castlevania. Um, Street Fighter, yeah, Street Fighter. That's another one, Street Fighter. Mega Man X, yeah, that's another one. Mega Man X. Um, GoldenEye, that's N64. Um, although there was a James Bond game on the Super Nintendo that sucked. Um, let's see, what else? We already said Street Fighter. We already said Street Fighter. Yeah, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, yeah, I played that. Turtles in Time, yeah. Yeah, Turtles in Time, very good. Yeah. as a, I, When I was younger, definitely Bomberman, Super Castlevania. Well, not Super Castlevania as much, but Mega Man and Bomberman were definitely like up there for me as like my favorite games, for sure. Uh, yeah, Turtles in Time. Yeah, Turtles in Time was definitely up there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the basketball game. Um, NBA Live 96. NBA Live. NBA Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that game. That game was good, too. Um, then you just lost 2 3 to Riddles in Elite Smash. Oh, sorry about that, man. Riddles is really good. Good stuff. Lion King, Aladdin, and um, Lion King and Aladdin were good. Yes, NBA Jam. Yes, NBA Jam was really good. Oh, NFL Quarterback Club. I used to play that because Steve Young. I, the only reason why I played that game because Steve Young was on the cover. Quarterback Club was really cool because it was a game that specialized in quarterbacks. So you can do like these, um, like these, uh, these little games that you would do, these um, like obstacle courses where you take quarterbacks and like they do hurdles and they do different drills. So it wasn't just like playing like, you know, 11 on 11 football, but like quarterbacks can do other stuff. So I'd always pick Steve Young, dude. Steve Young, he does the hurdles, he jumps, he does these little line zigzag things. It was great. So yeah, NFL Quarterback Club, um, Tech Mobile, Super Tech Mobile. Yeah, Tech Mobile, baby, let's go. Um, so yeah, man, yeah, heck yeah. Um, those were some good stuff. Um, um, Christian, can you can you put a link to that? Um, a link to that song, Christian, in the chat, and I'll play it. Uh, Sunset Riders, yeah, Sunset Riders was good. There's a lot of good games, man. There's a lot of good games in Super Nintendo. A lot of good games. I don't know what Maui Mallard is. I don't know what that is, to be honest. <laughs> but what's up, Christian? Welcome to the stream, man. Excuse me. Uh, next up is. Uh, Smash Ultimate, Roy's Hope. <clears throat> Alright. DuckTales? Uh, Duck, that's an NES game. DuckTales? 
Road Rash, that was on Sega Genesis, if I'm not correct. <laughs> Donald Duck game? I didn't like Super Punch Out as much. No, I didn't like I didn't like what they did. I back in the day I used to be petty about stuff. I didn't like what they did to Little Mac. Like they made him like a blonde. I I thought that it wasn't Little Mac. So I was like, this game sucks. But no, Super Punch Out's good though. It's good. But I, I like the original Punch Out more for some reason. There's just it was just there's something more more, I don't know, more, something just more authentic about the original Punch Out than Super Punch Out. Although I do like Punch Out on the Wii. That, that's that's why my favorite Punch Out is Punch Out on the Wii, which is a pretty much a remake of the original Punch Out with added stuff. Um, yo, Jay Biggs, what's good? All right, Christian, we'll get that. We'll get that music for you in just a bit. All right, man. Uh, yeah, Super Tennis was really good. Yeah, Super Tennis was awesome. Super Tennis was really good. Hey guys, I got something we can do too. Let's go through NES. We already went through Super Nintendo, so we don't got to do any more Super Nintendo. Let's go through NES, N64, GameCube, um. Uh, Wii, Wii U, and then Switch. Let's go through all the consoles and the favorite, the best games. So let's start with the NES. So we already went through Super Nintendo. We already know the best games. NES. What are your favorite games on the NES? I want to hear you guys' favorite games on the NES. Oh, Killer Instinct was awesome too. Killer Instinct was great. Um, I think I think between Ice Climbers, Snake, Peach, and Omar are the most technical characters. You really gonna put Peach in there, Party Man? <laughs> Really gonna put Peach in there? <laughs> uh, okay, I, I feel you, party man. <laughs> okay, okay, Peach is technical. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 I, I feel you. Uh, let me clean my <laughs> Um, Super Mario Bros. 3, that's it. THT, you didn't play any NES games. Um, Turtles, in uh, Turtles Arcade Game. The Turtles Arcade Game was dope. Mario Bros. 3, dope. Uh, really good games. Um, Excite Bike, dope. Double Dribble, that game sucked, but I played it. I played it. Um, I played it. Metroid, yeah, the original Metroid. Yes, sir. The original Mario Bros. Yes, sir. I don't care what anyone says. Super Mario Bros. Three is the best NES game. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Super Mario Bros. Three is awesome. To me, the best NES games, probably like my my top NES games, would probably be like Contra, Contra, Mario Bros. No, in no order. Contra, Mario Bros. Three, Turtles, Turtles Arcade Game. Those are probably my three favorite NES games. In that, it, those three games, those games were awesome. Oh, and River City Ransom. Who played River City Ransom? Duck Hunt was good too, but you can cheat with the paper. But Duck Hunt was good. Um, River City Ransom was dope, man. I loved River City Ransom. That's such a good game. Such a good game. Uh, Contra Three was Con that was Super Nintendo, wasn't it? Contra Three. I want to see you guys consistently float cancel and jump cancels fast fall with nair combos. I know, dude. What, Party Man? I said okay. <laughs> I I said okay. I said. <laughs> I, I, just, I said okay. <laughs> I think personally, I think Sheik is more technical. I think she. I think Sheik is more technical than than uh that than Peach. That's just. That's just my opinion, you know, because um, I want to see you kill with Sheik. <laughs> I want to see you get some kills with Sheik. <laughs> I want to see you survive, maybe. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, this man, Chu I know Chuba didn't say Wolf is technical. Did Chuba say that? I didn't see it. Chuba, I know you did. I think he's jo Chuba's joking. He's obviously joking. Um, he's obviously joking. I played Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt was good for its day, for what it did. It was innovative because of the light gun and all that. Excite bike, excite bike. Well, awesome. Um. So yeah, she can she she can technical. She's really easy to die with. She is definitely technical. <laughs> if you don't think she is technical. Then you never played her. 
You ain't never played her. And what you have to do to, to beat... Sheik is definitely technical. You got to do drag downs. You've got to do bouncing fishes. You've got to do nares and connect and go... You know, you've got to do a lot of stuff with Sheik. You've got to do a lot of stuff with her. You, you're, you're, the button's got to be moving. Sheik is definitely technical. Batman. Oh, yeah, the Batman. That game was great. Um, Batman was great. <clears throat> Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden was great. Another good one. Action 52. Yes, Action 52. Fantastic. Um... Fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, Chuba said that. Uh, well, he was he was definitely yeah he was definitely joking. He was definitely joking. Um, Wolf is one of the easier characters to use in the game. Obviously, one of the in terms of like top tier and easy to use. Wolf is one of the easier ones. Doesn't mean you're going to be good with him, but he's definitely one of the easier ones to use because he dominates neutral for pretty much everybody because of the laser. Um. I know it's I know it's Super Nintendo, but X Men is a good game on it. Okay, yeah, X Men's good. X Men's good. Nah, man. I, I, if I want to lose, then I play Sheik. Easiest character to lose with? Well, she's still technical though. That's what I'm saying. Like she's still technical. Like Sheik is Sheik is a tech. In order to do good with Sheik, you've got to be you got to play technical. Like it's a technical, you know, gameplay style with her because like you really need like that's why she's hard to use online too because you do have to. And put a lot of different buttons to get your combos to get get what you're doing drag downs things like that you know like joker in a way you know is not a super technical character to, to use but then he is because he can do drag downs you know like, almost like greninja can do drag downs and stuff like that and that's how you like get damage you know you got to do drag downs you got to do certain stuff like that but Sheik, you have to do more like to connect with bouncing fish you know uh nares to go up and grab you know uh nair to bouncing fish certain stuff like that you got to do like imp like like, as soon as you do something, you got to connect with something else. Whereas, like, a character, you know, you know, other characters, ne not necessarily, uh, don't have to do as much to get your combos going, you know? <clears throat> All right, take it easy, Carl. Uh, Shadow of the Ninja. Uh, Pardon me, says Sheik is definitely technical. Oh, absolutely. I know she is. I mean, all you got to do is watch somebody that's good use Sheik. You know, don't watch me. Watch, like, Void use Sheik, and you can clearly see that Sheik is a technical character. Not, not a very amazing character in terms of, you know, top tier and all that tier list, but I would probably say Sheik is probably a solid, you know, mid tier, upper mid tier character. <sighs> um, Bucky O'Hare on the NES. Yeah, I've played Bucky O'Hare. Uh, bases loaded was good on the NES. Bases loaded was good on the NES. Um, all right, so let's go to move on to the N64, guys. We already did Super Nintendo, so N64. What are your favorite N64 games? I got to hear you guys' favorite N64 games. <sighs> What are your favorite ones? I think for me, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark, obviously those are two of my favorite N64 games, but I don't really have much more. <laughs> I don't know if I have much more after that. Um, Doom 64, okay. Paper Mario. Paper Mario is one of my favorites as well, Paper Mario. Ridge Racer 64. Katana Riku was like a, a half, was one year old playing that game on the 64. Um, let's see here. Hey, what's up, Joker? Welcome to the stream. All the WCW. Yes, WCW. Um, WrestleMania 2000 was one of my favorite games. WrestleMania 2000. Uh, WrestleMania 2000 was fantastic on the N64. Loved that game. WrestleMania. Um, oh, WCW versus NWO Revenge. That was a great game on the N64. Smash 64, yep, Smash 64 was good. Ogre Battle 64, yes. Chameleon Twist, yes, those were good, those were good. I don't own N64, but the time I played it was Mario 64. Yep, Mario 64 is great. Okay, MoCats, Quest 64 is not a good game. You know it's not a good game, you're trolling. Snowboard Kids 2, Majora's Mask, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, I'm gonna, am I gonna buy Persona 5 Royal? Uh, no, or when it's like, when it's like twenty dollars, maybe. Um, let's see here. Can we agree that DK sixty four was trash? I can. I think that DK sixty four is it. It's cool at first, like at the time. TH three. Like if you play the game now, yeah, obviously you're not gonna like it. But at the time, it was probably okay. People did like it back then. But yeah, it's it's incredibly date. The game design is incredibly dated, in my opinion. Like it's super super grindy collectathon. You know, you know, too many characters. There's so many characters. You know, there's no co-op in the game. Like, that would have been... Like, I think there's multiplayer, but I don't know if there's co-op. Like, there should have been co-op, but the N64 probably couldn't handle it with the graphics that they were pushing on there. Because the game was, in terms of technical masterpiece for the N64, it was pretty... It's pretty good. It needed the expansion pack to play the game, too. It came with the expansion pack. Um, so, um, 
at the time it was like cool but like going back and playing the game now like yeah it's probably not that great of a game but i can't sit there and say that like it was like a when i played it i didn't think it was like the worst game ever but i i, I don't i didn't like the game anywhere near as much as the dkc games on the super nintendo like those I beat all the DKC, DKC 1, 2, and 3. I beat all those games multiple times on the Super Nintendo. DKC, I, I never even beat Donkey Kong Country 64 because somebody stole my game and I never even bothered to buy it back or play it again. But the, the, the cartridge was yellow like a banana, though. That was kind of cool. Um, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. I played Army Men on the PS1 a lot. I did play that. But yes, the 64 one was pretty good. Kobe Bryant's courtside, yeah, that was good, but I was always an NBA Live guy. I played NBA Live 99 a lot on the 64. Pokemon Stadium 2, yes, Pokemon Stadium was great. It was great. I like Pokemon Stadium. GoldenEye was fantastic. GoldenEye was really good. Resident Evil 2, I never played that on the N64. I played Resident Evil on the PlayStation. I did play it on there. Banjo, yeah, Banjo's good. Absolutely. Shadow Man, I've heard about Shadow Man, but I've never played it. I've never played Shadow Man. Um... I used to cheat using the analog stick in WCW versus NWO Revenge. <laughs> Wait, how did you cheat? You all, you're supposed to use the analog stick to do certain special moves, right? And like to break out of like certain, like to break out of like uh, like uh, submissions. Um, Clay Fighter. I used to play Clay Fighter a lot. We used to rent those games a lot. Clay Fighter titles. Star Fox 64. Yes, Star Fox 64 is great. Blast Corpse is underrated. Blast Corpse is definitely underrated. I didn't understand the game back when I was playing it, you know, but I think it's I think it's a good game. It's just got it, it just got overlooked. It just got overlooked a bit. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I never liked Conquer's Bad Fur Day, but everybody thought it was really good, you know. I played a lot of South Park 64. I played a ton of South Park 64. Um, we played multiplayer a lot in that game. It, it was a shooter, that game. That was like the shooter South Park game. Yeah, we played a lot of that back in the day. Me and my friends um jet force gemini yeah jet force gemini was pretty good it was pretty good um uh, yeah rare went ham on the n64 they went ham they used one of their their their, their one n64 engine and then they used it for like every game <laughs> every single rare game looked the same dude <laughs> uh mario party one i played mario party two to me mario party two that was the that was the game that really mario party two was legit on the n64 beetle adventure racing i hear john from spawn wave talk about beetle adventure racing all the time and like i think beetle adventure racing is good i've played i remember renting it and playing it thinking it was good but i didn't think it was as good as like john was saying it was so i have to go back and play it maybe one of these days you know yo what's up abaddon welcome superman 64 hold my beer superman that that game's great um that game's fantastic gex i never played gex down south play i never played it uh greatest n64 superman yeah superman 64 superman 64 that was the best one dude i remember when that game was coming out we, like we were all hyped for it but then when we started seeing screenshots like in like uh game informer and game pro and the magazines that we were like we were like man this game looks like it's gonna be trash like we just saw we just saw a bunch of fog and we just saw superman like a blocky superman going like this like flying like this like we were expecting to see like superman like all detailed and like punching somebody you know like you know like we were like Killer Instinct, goal. Like we were expecting to look like Killer Instinct, you know. That's a, that's what every, when, we, when we found out that there was gonna be a Super, uh, Superman game. It was oh, it's gonna be like Killer Instinct, where you just like punch somebody and like you walk and like you can fly. Like it's gonna, the graphics are gonna be amazing. And we're, when we saw the game, we were like, bro, like this ain't like we thought that we were gonna. Like, I thought it was gonna be like Killer Instinct. I thought it was gonna look like Killer Instinct in terms of graphics wise. I don't know why I did, but I thought it was gonna look like Killer Instinct with the graphics, and it it, it did it. Uh, yeah, Ogre Battle 64 is really good. Cruising World, yeah, those are all good. Um, Star Wars Pod Racing. Um, I played Star Wars Pod Racing a lot for some reason. I don't think I liked it, but my friend had the game, and we would play it, and that was, like, in the hype of, like, the Phantom Menace era, you know? So, yeah, we played it a lot, but I don't think I liked that game that much, to be honest, but it was cool. I played it. Um... <clears throat> I don't know English at all. The sentence on the left is translated by translation application. Okay. Okay. Uh, shout outs. Welcome to the stream, though. So, uh, um, welcome. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Star Fox 64. Yeah, we talked about that. Star Fox. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here, guys. That is um, not next topic. Next system. That is the GameCube. GameCube. What are your favorite GameCube games? I'll start off with mine. Super Smash Brothers Melee. Super Smash Brothers Melee is one of my Skies of Arcadia, um, Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance, um, Path of Radiance, another great GameCube game. 
Oh man, there's so many good GameCube games. Um, not me, not Super Mario Sunshine. Um, what else do we got? We've got more, man. There's so many good Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. That's another GameCube game. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. That one's awesome. Um, another good GameCube game. Um, other than Nintendo, Nintendo made some awesome stuff. Metroid Prime was good too. Metroid Prime. Um, Eternal Darkness, Thousand Year Door, Beautiful Joe, absolutely. Kirby Air Ride, Rayman. I didn't play Rayman three on the GameCube. Mario Tennis is up there. Yeah, Mario Mario Tennis was very good. Um, yeah, uh, Mario Tennis is really good. Double Dash. Yep, I used to play Double Dash. Dude, Double Dash was my jam. Dude, you know what we used to do with Double Dash back in the day? We used to connect it like Halo Land parties, but with Mario Kart Double Dash. So we went out and we went out and bought the GameCube adapters. So you guys know those network adapters that nobody ever used? We went out and bought those, and then we we had like four GameCubes, and we had uh, two people per a GameCube, right? So we would have four GameCubes, two people per a GameCube, and doing like, we would have LAN Mario Kart Double Dash. Think about that for a second. LAN Mario Kart Double Dash at my house, dude. It was just, dude, it was crazy. It was so good, man. I don't think you guys have never, you guys have never experienced that before. Eight players, Mario Kart, where you're working together on one cart, you know, like Double Dash. Dude, it's it's so fun. It's just as fun as Halo Land Party, in my opinion. It's it's so good. It's so good. We we tried it a few times, man. It was it was good. Um Yeah, you did yeah, I did Mario. I'm, that's how old I am. That Mario Mario Kart Double Dash Land Parties. Yeah, we had those. Cause we did we did uh, Halo Land Parties all the time, uh back in my mom's old house. Um, and, uh, we were like, let's do Mario Kart, man. We all like Mario Kart Double Dash. Like, let's, let's play Mario Kart on, like, you know, we couldn't play it online, but let, let's just play it. And we, we went, we, we got those LAN adapters. We all bought them. We had four of them, four GameCubes, you know what I'm saying? The controllers. And we just played LAN Mario Kart Double Dash. And it was the most amazing thing that I've ever played. One of the most amazing things ever, dude. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Prince of Persia. That's another good one. Yes. Yes. Prince of Persia. Sands of Time. I like that game. Uh, Wind Waker, yes, Wind Waker. That actually became my favorite um, Zelda game of all time. Um, Ocarina of Time was my favorite before that. And then when Wind Waker came out, that became my favorite. Because to me, that was like the real, like an open world Zelda game, you know? Um, I wasn't big on Pikmin back in the day, but I played them. I, I wasn't big on them. NBA Streets Volume 2 is my favorite sports game of all time. If you're going to call it like a sports game, NBA Street Volume 2 was amazing on the GameCube. It was so good. So good on the GameCube. Um... True Crime Streets of LA, yeah. True Crime Streets of LA was really good. Um, hold up, I'm, I forgot to play a song. Oops, my bad, my bad. Um, Juice Man Vaughn, thank you for the two dollars. And he says Melee Joker, um, Melee Joker Seven. What's Joker Seven? Metroid Prime One and Two, Time Splitters, Double Dash, Custom Robo, Gotcha Force. Play Circuit Theme. Okay, I have to play this other song though. Um, I forgot. Sorry about that, Christian. We're gonna go ahead and get this song here. And this is the Gerudo Desert theme from um, from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. And uh, Miz and Mr. Gaming are one of our mods here. Uh, she actually arranged this song herself. So, pretty cool. All right. Sorry, about, sorry for the long wait with that, Christian. I totally forgot because it wasn't on my list here. So, um, I only had it on, on, like, the URL. Um... <clears throat> But thank you, Juice Man Vaughn. Thank you for the two dollar donation, man. I appreciate that. What did you What did you mean by Joker? What's you mean Killer Seven? I think you meant Killer Seven. Killer Seven? Yeah, that game's great. Um, and we'll play Double Dash music in just a bit. Sonic Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes. I hated that game back then. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Resident Evil Four was the best game um, ever made. Best game. Okay, I have to agree. Resident Evil Four to me is the best GameCube game ever made. Yeah, I have to agree. Resident Evil 4 is my favorite GameCube game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. But if you played, not Resident Evil 4 later, if you played Resident Evil 4 back in the day, Resident Evil 4 is the basis for all of the third person shooters that you guys see today. Resident Evil 4 is the, is it's like the N64 controller. Resident Evil 4 gave developers the template for third person shooters in the modern day easy clap easy resident evil 4 the behind the back when you aim you zoom in gears uncharted all of these third person shooters that came afterwards all took inspiration from resident evil 4 that was the game that that was a pivotal instrumental 
genre defining, industry wide wow. When Resident Evil 4 came out, everybody said, wow, what is this? It was way ahead of its time. It was 10 years plus ahead of its time. Even still to this day, Resident Evil 4 is more technical than a lot of other third person shooters out there. Resident Evil 4, I have to agree with that. Resident Evil 4 is the best GameCube game of all time to me. And it changed the industry as we know it. That game was nuts. There was nothing else like it on the system. That game was nuts. Um, crazy. I remember playing that game back then. Um, and when I first got that game, I don't know what I was expecting. I started seeing the reviews and everyone was like, yo, these reviews are hot for the game. But when you booted it up and when you saw Leon and the voice acting, it has everything. It has the, the 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 theatrics of a big budget you know triple a game right it has that it has the gameplay it has the upgrades it has the uh the, the the replay value it has the extra modes mercenaries mode it has everything resident evil 4 has everything and it it, it seems like it was custom built for the gamecube controller it had playable uh you know button context like cutscenes like you you're in a cutscene you're fighting krauser with a knife battle and you're pressing buttons for the cutscene. So it's not only do you have to watch the cutscene, it's not just watching, but you have to play the cutscenes too. It was the first time ever that I ever did that. I mean, God of War had like the button context sensitive stuff, but during cutscenes, I remember the first time that that happened, I died. It, it was like, what was it? The boat scene. You guys remember the boat scene in Resident Evil 4 where like the, you're fighting against that big fish or whatever in the boat and like Leon... Uh, you think that you win, but then all of a sudden, like your leg gets trapped, and you have to cut the you have to cut the rope in time. I didn't cut the rope, and I died, and I got dragged into the lake, and died. I was like, I was like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, what is this? These, these, these quick time events. Oh, and then the time when you're fighting Krauser, and like if you don't press the button right, he'll just he'll just cut you, and you die. Oh my god, dude, Resident Evil Four, that game, so good, dude, so good, so good. Um, so good. Anyway, sorry, I had to go on a Resident Evil 4 rant. That game is awesome. That game is the GOAT. It's one of the GOATs for me. Um, that game is really good. <clears throat> really good. Double Dash. All right. Twilight Princess was a great game on the GameCube. The only thing that hurt that game was that it was released at the same time as the Wii version. So, Or actually, no, it was released after the Wii version, wasn't it? I think it was released after the Wii version. Yeah, the Wii version came first, and then the GameCube version came um but yeah the gamecube version was better though for sure um circuit theme all right um all right i also like 007 nightfire i thought that game was really good too resident evil resident evil 4 even made quick time events good they did they did make quick time events good RE4 um, on the Wii was the best version by far. The Wii pointer made it so much, uh, made so many games better. RE4 was definitely easier to play and better on the Wii, but of course it just came out on the GameCube first. So, but yeah, it was definitely easier to play and made and made aiming great. It made it really good. I agree. Um, NBA Street Home Court. I thought Home Court was a little bit weaker than um, Volume Two. Game of Darkness. That was good. That was good. Um, Nintendo's never gonna do like a Mario Kart Double Dash sequel. If anything, there'll be like a double. There'll be like a mode maybe, but they'll never. They'll never do the same gimmick for a Mario Kart game. They they always kind of change gimmicks for the most part, unless it's like a portable Mario Kart, right? But even like the portable Mario Karts, like the only one that kind of didn't change a gimmick was like the Game Boy Advance Mario Kart. But pretty much they they always change like Super Nintendo to N64. That was 3D graphics. That was, the gimmick there was 3D graphics, but then like GameCube was Double Dash. In the Wii, it was like bike, like motorcycles, online play. Wii U, it was um, anti-gravity. You know, so, so they always kind of change the gimmick, you know? Um, three racers on one guy. Tri triple Dash. NBA Street and NFL Blitz on the Switch. We're probably going to be getting NFL Blitz or like a Blitz type of game. Um, 2K. They're, they have the license to make NFL games now. So we're probably going to see some type of Blitz type of game or something like that. Or like... Um, NFL Street type of game on the Switch, maybe, uh, going forward in the future. Uh, there's a market there, um, and I'm, I'm thinking that I'm thinking they're going to bring that over. Um, all right, so let's move on from the GameCube. Guys, hit that like button. I'm looking at the view. I don't usually... I'm looking at the viewers. We're at 244 viewers. Let's go. Thank you guys so much. 
hit that like button guys let's get some more new people into the village here all right make sure you subscribe if you're watching i do streams every single day we have a lot of fun it's a lot of cool stuff there so please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed let me know if you subscribe and it doesn't pop up on the screen let me know i'll give you a shout out but hit that like button let's get things going let's go baby thank you thank you guys so much for watching the stream i appreciate you guys um all right next up is um the uh wii next up is the wii so what are your favorite games from the wii from the wii the wii um i do remember chain lightning i do remember um i do remember mikami saying that but um i think there was some other stuff mikami laughed after that didn't he um uh, no filter Nintendo podcast is Mad World, No More Heroes, One and Two, Last Story, Pandora's Tower, Takamoku versus Capcom, Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter, Monster, Monster Hunter Try, Xenoblade, Punch Out, Sonic Colors, Golden Eye, Zack and Wiki, Metroid, Fragile, Tra Trauma Team, DK, D uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. I love almost every single game that you that you put there. Donkey Kong Country Returns, that game, it's cool. But once again, it was one of those games. I love that game because I played it caught with my brother. I beat the whole thing. But man, it was kind of like kind of like motion control garbage in that game. But it was good. Skyward Sword, very good. Yep. Xenoblade for sure. Yeah, Xenoblade is probably my favorite Wii game along with Galaxy games. Mario Galaxy. Uh, Mario Galaxy and Xenoblade are probably my favorite Wii games. Um, Smash Brothers Brawl. WarioWare says Geo. Uh, Bryson says Mario Kart Wii. Mario Kart Wii. Yeah, that was actually my favorite Mario Kart game. Mario Kart Wii before, um, before Mario Kart 8. Because it has motorcycles. I like motorcycles. Um, so I skipped over the Wii. Wii U get oh man, you skipped those. Wow. The Wii's good. The Wii was good. People gave it a lot of crap, but it was actually pretty good. There was a lot of games, man. There was a lot of games on the Wii. Like a lot of games on the Wii. There's a lot of exclusives too. A lot of exclusives on the Wii. Like like uh No Filter Nintendo Podcast was saying, there's a ton of exclusives on the Wii. Just like so much stuff. Um <sighs> Um, no more heroes one and two. Yep. Great games. Great games. I played and beat both of those. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Here's a low key banger that nobody, no one played on the Wii. Super Swing Golf 2. Hmm. I never heard of that. Super Swing Golf 2. All right. All right. Hey guys, I'm looking at the like button here. We need to get at least 30 more people that hits that like button. So guys, even if you're on your mobile device or if you're on your PlayStation or you're on your Xbox, you're on your Nintendo Switch, you can hit the like button. Just Press the button, move over, use the analog stick, and hit the like button. Let's do it. Hit those three buttons on the Xbox and hit the like button. Thank you guys so much for the support. Keep on hitting it. Let's go. Let's go. Um, Mario Party 8 was the best Mario Party uh, before the Wii U killed the series. <laughs> the Wii U killed the series, but then the Switch brought the series back. But even though people don't like that game, apparently. But it, no, it's a local multiplayer. Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart on the Switch is actually pretty good. It's just the online's not that great. But yeah, they, it, it's it's pretty, and that game sold really. That game sold like nearly ten million copies on the Switch, which is crazy. We bowling, we bowling, yeah, we bowling was good. We bowling was good. <clears throat> the Conduit Golden Eye remake, uh, the Conduit Golden Eye remake, Modern Warfare, and Metroid Prime Trilogy are a bunch of first-person shooters on the Wii. Yeah, those are all good, or those are all there at least. Uh, we boxing, we boxing was so inaccurate, dude. Um, I like the Wii Sports Resort a lot more than Wii. Although Wii Tennis was great. I used to play Wii Tennis all the time, man. Wii Tennis was legit back in the day. Um, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles. Yeah, those are good too. Those games had really good graphics for... I mean, but they were light gun shooters. But they had really good graphics for what, what the Wii could do. Capcom kind of went ham on the Wii at times, dude. They put out... A, they put uh, the uh, House of the Dead. They put out a bunch of House of the Dead games. They put out Dark Side Chronicles. They put out... Uh, Monster Hunter, they put out a bunch of games on the Wii. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Resident Evil 4, yeah, Resident Evil 4, yeah, that was on there. They also had Resident Evil 0, too, Resident Evil 0 was on there, um, and I think they also did, Capcom had more games, like it's Tatsunoku versus Capcom, that was really good as well. Um, Red Steel, yeah, Red Steel was very good, Red Steel was really good. Yeah, Skyward Sword, we talked about that, Skyward Sword, very good. Uh, the con I, I, and you know the Conduit games, Conduit 1 and 2, Ethan talked about those. I played the Conduit games. Like, I was so hyped for the Conduit, dude, back in the day. But I played Conduit 1, and I played Conduit 2. And I, I was like, okay, these games are cool. Like, Conduit 1 was that low-key, old-school, like, you know, uh, you know, just basic shooter. But it was just like, it was a game that tried to push the Wii Tech as far as it could take it. You know, it was the one game 
that really that the developers really tried graphics wise to do what the best that we could do it it looked fairly good it was just an sd you know it was just an sd but they, i mean if the game was like if there was like an hd version of the game that that would be you know that would be pretty it, it would look great if there was an hd version of that game all right i think that's it for this music here so thank you so much juice bam Vaughn. i appreciate the uh, appreciate the um, the donation. Hopefully you enjoyed that Mario Kart Double Dash music. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it did come out on the GameCube, but there was also we they also did Wii versions of that too, as well. Mirror Monster: The Demon Blade. That is a great Wii game. That is definitely underrated. Vanillaware title, two D action RPG. Very good. Very 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 good. Sonic Sonic Four Episode One was that on the Wii? I don't think that was on the Wii, was it? Sonic Four Episode One. I know that there was like Sonic and the Black Knight, and there was like Sonic and the Secret Rings, and there was other Sonic games. Sonic uh, Colors, which was probably the best one out of the Sonic games on the on the Wii. Um, <clears throat> Beautiful Joe, that was that was backwards compatible with the Wii, but that's a GameCube game. Beautiful Joe is not a Wii game. Um, let's continue to forget Sonic Four. <laughs> Yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah, we already talked about that. Skylanders Giants. Okay, that was at the very tail end, right? Sin and Punishment Star Successor. That is a great game that I played a lot. Um, that I played a lot, dude. It was so good. It was so good. I like Sin and Punishment Star Successor. It's a really good game. It's a really, really, really good game. <clears throat> Don't forget Wii Sports Club. Uh, all the games were, point, were online. Multi Wii Sports Club? Um... That was not a Wii game. We're not talking about Wii U. We're talking about Wii, Kyodai. So Wii, not Wii U, Wii. Um, yo, what's up, Aron? Welcome to the stream. Contra and Castlevania Rebirth. Yes, those were good, too. Those were the WiiWare titles. Yeah, those were good, too. Waiting for Beautiful Joe Trilogy Remake to hit the Switch. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But welcome to the stream, Aron. How you doing tonight, man? Welcome. Um, Tiger Woods PGA Tour. Games were amazing on the Wii. They were pretty good on the Wii. The Tiger Woods games were good. Those were pretty good usage of like the Wii. And didn't they use Wii Motion Plus on there too? Um, after a bit, they, they did use Wii Motion Plus on the on the Tiger Woods games for the Wii. I just got physically tired trying to trying to play those games though. That's, that's the only thing that I got kind of tired like trying to just like swing like a real golf club. I got tired of that crap. Um, just Dance, yeah, Just Dance. Uh, there you go, Just Dance uh playing ac oh uh, yeah i'm just streaming just streaming <laughs> but i was playing ac earlier um for those who just joined in thank you guys so much for joining i appreciate it uh please make sure you guys hit that like button see if we can get to 260 plus people watching man thank you guys so much for joining me tonight talking old school games talking favorite games um just talking about video games just trying to take our mind off this nonsense that's going on out there so uh appreciate you guys man appreciate you guys uh, please make sure, um, <clears throat> please make sure you guys, I uh, hit that like button. Let's get some more people in here. Um, <clears throat> um, let's see here. Um, we golf was the only video game my grandpa ever played. Oh, we still, uh, we still play and he loves it. Nice. Nice. Um, a thousand likes. We can't get to a thousand. We need a thousand people watching. Ashoka Tano just tagged me. Uh, Warrior Wear Smooth Moves and Warrior Land Shake It. Smooth Moves was apparently pretty good. I remember playing that game. I thought it was okay. I did say Conduit. That's a good game. Um, it's a good game. All right. Next up, we're gonna go to the Wii U, guys. So a lot of you guys might not. Some of you guys probably know some of these, but we're gonna go to the Wii U. So what are your favorite Wii U games? Um, for me, Wii U, um, definitely Tokyo Mirage Sessions for sure. Um, uh, Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, those are really good. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles X was really good. Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, um, that's really good as well. Um, Wonderful 101, that was a very good game. I love playing that. Super Mario 3D World, very good game as well. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, very good game um, as well. Also, really good game. What else do we've got? We've got um, Bayonetta Two. Was probably like, probably like my favorite game along with Smash Brothers. Bayonetta Two, Bayonetta Two. Oh my gosh, Bayonetta Two. <laughs> Bayonetta Two. That is a genre-defining game to me. Bayonetta Two was just absolutely phenomenal. That is the pinnacle to me. That is the pinnacle of the action 
stylish action. Like, so out of all the games like God of War that used to be stylish action, you had like Prince of Persia that was kind of like that. You had a, uh, you know, um, you had Devil May Cry. Bayonetta 2 to me is, is the best. Even like if you, even in today's day, like now at this point, I think Bayonetta 2 is still better than every other Devil May Cry or every other Prince of Persia or every other game, God of War, or whatever the case is. Bayonetta 2 to me is still the, the tops. It is, it is so good. That's my, probably like my favorite normal game. Um, Splatoon, yes, Splatoon is great. I say Xeno X. Xeno X is really good. Xeno X. Mario Kart 8, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bayonetta 2, Xenoblade X, Pikmin 3, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Yep, very good. Xenoblade X, that's all I played. Oh, man, that's all you played? You didn't play Bayonetta 2? Um, let's see here. Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land would have... All Nintendo Land needed was online play. That's all it needed. Every time that I think of Nintendo, I'm like, no. Oh, God, Nintendo Land would have been god to You had everything. You had people walking around. It was... It, it was... Dude... That was that was probably one of the biggest failures for the Wii U was not having that. Nintendo should have made, they needed to make that game online. They had your Mies. It's like okay, you want to push this casual family friendly thing. Okay, I get it. You want to push families playing, but man, you have a plaza, you have or a plaza, you have Mies walk around, you have your friends talking about things. So you you just, just add the way to play with them. No, man, that was such a missed opportunity. They, I don't know why they didn't get it done. They had to. And they just didn't. Man, it was such a missed opportunity. Um, they had the whole train uh, mode that could never experience because there was no online. Yeah, exactly, dude. It, the game was good. Nintendo Land's a good game. But, dude, there's nobody to play with. I, I don't have friends that are going to sit down and play Nintendo Land with me. By that time, everybody was old. People are having kids. They're in college. We're all San Diego, Fresno. We're in this and that. Dude, I, I, had, I had a little baby girl I was taking care of. Nobody has to time to sit down and play nintendo land with me oh man such a missed opportunity such a missed opportunity oh anyway uh breath of the wild that's true breath of the wild is one of the best wii u games that's for sure breath of the wild um um with the cv nintendo will maybe push online more well it's not even with the CV pushing. <laughs> Nintendo's been pushing online more. Pretty much all of the main multiplayer games for Nintendo are online. I mean, I don't think <laughs> I don't think CV's affecting that. That's something that you that's that's something that you planned from the very beginning. So we have Splatoon, we have Arms, we have Mario Kart, we have a bunch of games that are already online before this whole CV thing even started. So Nintendo's already been pushing online play. All of Nintendo's multiplayer games are usually online. Nintendo doesn't usually make a multiplayer game that isn't online. Luigi's Mansion is online. Mario Party they finally got that online. Although the online's not great, but they finally got that online. Um, so most of their multiplayer games are online. I mean, Mario, uh, Mario Maker is online. Um, there's very few Nintendo first-party games that, that are multiplayer that don't have online. You know, New Super Mario Bros. is one of them, uh, but Mario Maker has online. Um, so, yeah, most of them do. Most of them do have online. Um, so, yeah. I mean, even more. I, I don't know how much more Nintendo can push it. <laughs> I don't know how much more. Uh, pretty much every single multiplayer game they have it has online play. So, I don't know. I don't know how much more they can push it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing has online. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy how Luigi's Mansion and Animal Crossing New Horizons have the best online play for Nintendo Switch. In terms of, what do you mean by best online play? Like most enjoyable online experience? Um, that's debatable that's debatable I, I i don't think luigi's mansions online is good enough for me for me to continue playing that like i even with smash brothers problems i'd rather play smash online than i'd rather hop into lobbies and play against you guys in smash than play luigi's mansion uh so so i mean that's just me the if the, if the screen park was online then i might agree with you because those mini games are actually really good um and i think those are fun um but that tower mode i wouldn't call that like really like amazing but it's good though it's not bad for sure but it's just kind of it's kind of boring after a while um so so yeah but animal crossing is good online but the problem with animal crossing online is man it takes a long like if you're playing it takes a long time to get people in i think the features for animal crossing is great i think the app is great the scanning and being able to put stuff in is great i think the messaging is fantastic sending people uh gifts is great like it's it's really good that is really good the actual play online play for animal crossing you kind of have to make your own game in there which is fine you know but 
I think once towns get more developed, then it'll be more fun. But as of right now, like if you're not like time skipping and traveling and cheating, you're gonna have to like make your own fun, you know, because you can't do certain things in the multiplayer. So, I mean, I guess it's debatable on that. I think the multiplayer will get better over time as they add more things. I think they'll add more stuff. But um, the features are good. The online features are good with the multiplayer. But in terms of just playing it, I still rather play against people in Smash than do either one of those two um, in, terms of, in terms of that. Uh, stable connection, no frame rate jobs, frame rate skips. Yeah, but it's a different... Yeah, once again, it's a, it's a different type of type of game. I mean, like Luigi's Mansion... Once again, um, it's 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 just different. It's hard to compare the two with like Luigi's Mansion in terms of like frame rate skips and stuff like that. You know, th then with a fighting game, like of course you're gonna get that with a fighting game. It's a peer to peer fighting game that's running at sixty frames per second. Luigi's Mansion, you have people skipping all over the place. They just run over because it, it doesn't matter. It's not a it's not a competitive game. You know, it's just it's just Luigi's Mansion. Animal Crossing, sometimes people skip, but it's it's just Animal Crossing. You're just there's no point. Even if it does skip. They can do that. They don't have to make it to where it stops or anything like that because it's not competitive. You're just running around. It's the same thing with Luigi's Mansion. You're just running around. Mario Kart 8, you're just racing, you know, so people can skip. It's like whatever, you know? Uh, so, that, I mean, that's the difference. Like, I see what you're saying. I, I get that, but I don't know. It's hard, it's hard for me to put those in the same category, you know? <clears throat> um... So, yeah, uh, in the world, well, people's ghetto internet ruins animal. Yeah, that's another problem, too, like, disconnection. Like, if somebody disconnects, it literally destroys everything. Whereas, like, in Smash Brothers, if somebody disconnects from your lobby, it doesn't destroy the whole lobby. <laughs> like, it, doesn't, it doesn't destroy everything. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, I, I get it, but I don't, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not ready to put it up there with the other games because of the, the style of online that it is. But that, that's just me. That's just me, in my opinion. Um, Yoshi's Woolly World and Captain Toad. Okay, those are good games, too um right we you had great great titles that everyone now wants yeah the problem with the wii u it does have great titles but it was just spread out it was just spread out and like they took a long time to get the rpgs going like the best rpgs came out like in 2015 and 2016 at the at the end you know at the end so so yeah wii u was the most creative console last gen I mean, yeah i guess but it wasn't but the gimmick didn't work though so i mean i see what you're saying but the gimmick didn't work um pikmin 3 wind waker and smash bros nice great quality software on unexciting hardware equals wii u yeah i can yeah yeah that's definitely great titles but just spread out took a long time to get there and just basically whenever something came out it's not like people didn't want that at that time it was like oh we've got this game wonderful 101 but why is this coming out at this point like we want some we want a new big mario game you know or something like that so it was just it was great software but just timing was just off you know time and like the, another problem was like people like the power situation right people were just like it's not strong enough why are we paying for this big game pad you know the games are running worse the third party games are running worse they're not running better like there was a lot of other things but there was a lot of great games on the wii u there really was it, there really was a lot of great games i think that if nintendo released the wii u as more of a budget tier system so if it was a gamecube it would have done better. I think it would have sold in the 25 million unit range, maybe 20 to 25 million unit range instead of the 13 million units. So if they just said, hey, this is a $199, you know, essentially like, you know, souped up power Wii, Wii you know, and it comes with the Wii, U, it comes with one of these and it comes with just the system and it's $199, I think people would have been like, all right, we can do this. I think it would have done a lot better if it was that. If they just made it like a GameCube 2. That's essentially what if you take away the Wii U gamepad, that's what the that's what the Wii U was. It was a it was like a GameCube too. It was just it was the power PC architecture. It was just we just take this and we we times the GameCube times 15 or 20 or whatever, right? We just we just make a nice little jump from the GameCube in terms of you take 15 GameCubes and duct tape them together or whatever, or 10 GameCubes and duct tape them together, make it efficient, you know? Um, and just make it to where it, it does a really good job at playing games. You know, it does a really good job at that. When If developers take the time to design the games for the system, um, but they did the whole Wii U gamepad thing. But if, if the system wasn't the Wii U, if they just made it like game, if they called it GameCube 2 and they just did, and they just made it with that, and it was $199 without the Wii U gamepad, it would have, I think it would have been successful. I think it would have been more, more successful, more successful. If they did that, let's just say same games, same exact games, you know, but just 199, it would have done way better. I think it would have sold, like I said, 25 to 25 to 30 million, maybe 20, 25 to 30 million, in my opinion. Nintendo uh, Wii U was the only console that Nintendo never price cut. Uh, 
Yeah, you're right. I don't. Yeah, they don't. They, they they never price cut the system. They never did. Well, they were already moving on to the next thing afterwards. So it was like whatever. Uh, Nintendo needs to make a new F Zero or just remaster F Zero GX. Yeah, we'll see about that. Right? We'll see about that. Uh, they advertise the Wii U as doing what the Switch currently does. I was rooting for Wii U so hard. I was rooting so hard for the Wii U. Me too, man. Me too. I got dude. I never got called fanboy more times in my life. <laughs> Uh, see, dude, imagine, imagine this. Imagine if Nintendo branded the Wii. Imagine if the Wii U was called the GameCube Two, right? Let's just say they called it the GameCube Two, um, and let's just say that they had like specialists like with Bayonetta Two, Black Wii U, Bayonetta Design, Bayonetta Two, Bayonetta Controller, stuff like that would have got people way more hyped about the system, right? Like, think about it. What if it was a one hundred and ninety nine dollar bundle in with Bayonetta Two? special edition wii u with like black with different and like they can they can afford to do that because the gamepad wasn't taking up all the manufacturing so you can afford to make different types of systems more because you don't got to worry about gamepad manufacturing right because like whenever that's the reason why there wasn't a lot of special edition we use is because you have to worry about the gamepad manufacturing and that's too expensive but if it was just the system itself with the controller they could have done all sorts of cool special editions in different colors like the gamecube did right um, and even like the Wii did too. The Wii had red, the, the Wii had red, red and different colors and stuff like that. But the Wii U, they just couldn't. It was just too expensive to manufacture so many different colors of a system that wasn't selling. Imagine if it was cheaper and they were able to get that different special edition Wii U's and stuff like that, man. It, ugh, dude, it would have been dope, dude. It would have been because there was good games. There was. Um, Wii U came out uh, too late. If it came out 2010 or 2011, it would have done real good. If it came out 20, yeah, I think that if it came out 2010. It would have got Skyward Sword. <laughs> they would have, they would, they would have ported it. They would, they would have readapted the game or ba basically make it to where you can use the Wii, the Wii remote with the Wii U, with, with it on Wii U, right? But they would have made a Wii U version of Skyward Sword, and absolutely right, absolutely it would have done better because there would have been a version on there of. I think they would have ported the game to the Wii U as well. So it would have been like Twilight Princess, right? It would have been like Twilight Princess to where it was on the GameCube or sorry, yeah, on the GameCube and on the Wii. So I think it would have been like that. And yes, with Skyward Sword, absolutely, the, the Wii U would have done a lot better. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, um, so let's see here. The, yeah, the early rumors were Wii HD. The early rumors were Wii HD, yes. Um, you only added bundles to the Wii U add value but never saw a price cut. Yeah, that's true. You're right. You're, you're right about that. There was never a real price cut for the system. You know, there was never a real price cut for the system. Um, it just depends what you'd consider a system seller. I personally think Super Mario 3D World was definitely a system seller type of game. Um, and I think that it did boost sales. It did. So, I mean, Super Mario 3D World would be to me like the first, like, yo, this is a legit, every like big popular franchise that's going to sell millions upon millions of copies or systems. But I would say Super Mario 3D World was like the first system seller that you can see that actually got people to say okay i'm gonna go out there and buy this system that and believe it or not wind waker hd wind waker hd boosted sales more than what people thought it would boost sales obviously it wasn't amazing but wind waker hd got people to get up there and go buy the system because there was a special edition zelda wii u embroidered gamepad or whatever so wind waker hd and also um, Super Mario 3D World were the two games in 2013 that would be anything considered a system seller. Then, of course, in 2014, we did get Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That didn't really system sell as much, like boost sales as much. But then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, that was like the first, okay, yeah, this really boosted sales more, significantly more than what we saw. Smash Brothers as well boosted sales. But the only problem was that, like, by then people were just kind of like, eh, you know, at that point. People were looking for a price cut and we didn't get one. Uh, there was no way there was even uh, no gamepad when you would have been uh, 249. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there was no way, even if there was no gamepad, the Wii U would have been uh, under 249. No, actually, that's not true. Uh, what we understand, Miyamoto did an interview. The gamepad adds about $100 to the price. And the reason why we know that, because Miyamoto said, like, well, if the Xbox and the GameCube, or if the Xbox or, what was it, Xbox 360 or the Xbox One, or I don't, I forgot what it was, what system he was talking about. But he said that if those systems had a gamepad, those would be $100 more. So everybody find out, like, wait a minute, it's $100 to manufacture the gamepad, or it's near $100 to have that gamepad, or it's like $70 or something. It's a big part of the chunk of the cost. So if they remove the gamepad, they were selling the Wii U for $300. 
So if they removed the gamepad, it definitely would have been under 249. The technology in there was power PC technology. It was old. They had been using it. It was GameCube architecture, GameCube and Wii architecture, and they just boosted the GP, GPU. It's a GP GPU. That's what they used. It was a it, it was not expensive to make. It was not super the what costed the Wii U system to be what it was was the gamepad. The architecture and the system itself was not new advanced super crazy advanced tech the tech was around a pc in like i think like a 2008 or 2009 C, you know graphics in terms of what a pc could do that was the technology built into there it was 2008 2009 you know um so it wasn't a super advanced system even when it released in 2012 you know the we uh the switch for example had newer tech in terms of graphics for mobile chips tegra x1 was 2015 what they used for the Wii U was not new tech. It was power PC architecture. It was what they used for the Wii and the GameCube. Um, they just made it stronger, you know? Um, so, so yeah, man. Um, the Wii was sold, at a, uh, was, was sold at a markup, though. And once again, the Wii was sold at a markup, and it was because of the controllers as well, because of the Bluetooth controllers and stuff like that. Um, that's the reason why the Wii, but the Wii was, uh, the, the Wii was definitely sold at a markup. That's why they were able to drop the price very quickly on the Wii and still be profitable. The Wii was being sold for $99 and was still profitable for Nintendo. It was being sold for $150 at one point and it was still profitable. Um, GameCube was profitable at 190 at $199. GameCube was, GameCube was never not profitable. And GameCube went down all, all the way to $99 and was profitable. They just took that. They used the same architecture over and over and over. You know what I'm saying? Like they use it over there's There was, there was nothing really that they, any type of crazy new tech. They use the GameCube architecture power PC, which was cutting edge or advanced at its time. They used it again for the Wii. They used it again for the Wii U. They used the same architecture of the power PC. They definitely could have got that system at $200. Absolutely. And still be profitable. If the gamepad wasn't there, they definitely could have done it. I think, or it would have been a small profit, but it would have been a profit. I think they, or they could have made some, a little bit of design, a couple different design choices and things in terms of features and functionality. The Wii U had so many things built into it when it comes to the price of the system that were extra. Like how the system handled like Nintendo TV, how the system handled all the apps and everything. That stuff costs a lot of money to kind of R&D and lab out, you know? So if they kind of removed that stuff and just made it a system that plays games and like maybe you had a couple apps on there like Netflix and all, if they didn't go ham on like the, the features and the TV and the Miiverse and all that stuff, that's what kind of also, in, you know, increased the price of what, in terms of what they were doing. The system and the specs itself were not something that they couldn't get under at $200, in my opinion, at least. Because the Xbox 360 was selling, I mean, it was around the power of that. They were selling it in terms of, uh, of that for 199 and making profit off of that, you know? So, I mean, I see what you're saying. I definitely see what you're saying. But at the same time, like, you've got to look at it from what other companies were doing. And they were making profit off of that. Nintendo always made profit off of the power PC architecture at 199 How come they couldn't do that with, if there was no gamepad? I think in 2012, with that graphics being slightly above what the Xbox 360 and PS3 could do. I think they could have sold it for 199 and still been still been profitable, in my opinion. Um, the three the difference with the 3ds 3ds had cutting edge tech. 3ds was the first ever glassesless 3D display. The 3ds had cutting edge tech that no other system had, that no other device had, that cell phones didn't have. It, it was that's completely different because nobody had that tech. You know what I'm saying? What they did with the 3DS was completely different because it was glassesless 3D. Nobody had that tech at all, you know? The, the problem with the Wii U, too, is that they had to put in, like, the chip for beaming the gamepad screen, you know, beaming whatever, like, projecting it to the gamepad. Obviously, if you don't have a gamepad, you don't have to put that tech inside there. Now, that was the precursor to the Switch, so I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have ever gotten the Switch, so I'm not saying that we shouldn't have had it, but I'm just saying, like, what you know, what the, what the Wii U, like, if you were to make the Wii U successful, like, what would they have to do? So that streaming tech that they put in that little chip that beams the GPU to a, a wireless, that was expensive. Without the Wii U gamepad, you no longer need that either, you know? That was probably one of the cutting edge or new things in there in terms of what jumped the price up of the system, you know? Um, so, yeah. Um, but the glassless 3D, that was expensive tech at the time. That was, that was expensive. Um, 
So, so yeah. <clears throat> um, do you think the Switch Lite can get cheaper than two hundred dollars over uh, cheaper than two hundred dollars over time um, since it doesn't have the gimmicks of the regular Switch? Um, I think maybe like one, maybe one fifty one of these days. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure if it can get too much cheaper um, in terms of it. Still, still a pretty good tech Tiger, you know, Tiger X One tech built into it for two hundred. That's still not bad. I don't think they're making a ton of profit off the Switch Lite. Um. Um, so yeah. Um, all right, so let's go to move on. I guess we spent too much time on the Wii U. Let's go ahead and let's move to the uh, <laughs> let's move to the Switch. All right, guys. So what are your favorite games on the Nintendo Switch? And shout outs to three hundred people watching. Let's go. We hit the three hundred mark. I love when we hit the three hundred mark. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Hit that like button. Share the video if you can. And remember, guys, we're trying to get some more people elite ninja here in the village. We're trying to hit 225, get a brand new emo emote slot and bonus stream. So if you want to support the elite ninja village, make sure you do so. Hit that link that's there that says become an elite ninja and uh, support the stream. And also, we're going to be playing more Animal Crossing. We have a bonus multiplayer for Animal Crossing for elite ninja. We have uh, Mario Kart as well, which today's Tuesday. We were supposed to play that, but we have something special. I can't play Mario Kart tonight. No stream tonight because I can't. I can't because we got to do something tomorrow morning. But um, uh, but yeah, we, we have Mario Kart usually on Tuesdays, but this is a special week. Uh, we have Smash Brothers. So you guys, hit that Elite Ninja link. Let's go. And the shout-outs to everybody who's watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Let's get 25 new likes right now while we move into the Nintendo Switch. To me, which is my favorite Nintendo, Nintendo Switch system or Nintendo system of all time, is the Switch. It's my favorite. It has everything the Wii U, you know, had, which are, and they removed the gimmicks. They removed the Wii U gamepad gimmicks, and you can still play it portable. You can play... It has the best gimmick of all time. I think that Nintendo always uses gimmicks for their systems, right? Gimmicks in a good way. The Switch has the greatest gimmick for a home system of all time. The great, There is no greater gimmick than you can play your game anywhere. Any of these games, you can play them anywhere. You want to take this big Zelda game and play it on a bus, on a flight, in the second room in your daughter's room, in the living room, outside, while you're barbecuing, in the car. That is the greatest gimmick of all time, is portability. The greatest gimmick. Um, but yeah, the games are amazing, man. Um, let's see. Every uh, every damn game I own because I can play them on the go. Exactly. It's the, it's the best gimmick of all time. Best gimmick of all time. Um... <clears throat> It's a handheld that you can play on TV. Sega, no Sega Nomad style. The only Sega Nomad was good, but the only problem with Sega Nomad was the price and just like sometimes the games like and like when it came out too. Um, but yeah, Sega Nomad. <clears throat> but this one's different though. Switch was just and like the the controllers in terms of how you do the controllers. You know how like basically you have you're, you're set to go wherever, anywhere that you go. You bring the dock. You bring everything. Bam. You you plug that system in. You uh you um you. Um, use the joy cons or you can use it as a regular controller with the with the uh with, with the dog controller or whatever or with the with the was it like the little holder thing that you have i don't ever use that controller but yeah for that it was great um not the greatest gimmick for a home console it's the greatest uh, uh greatest handheld gimmick of all time it's the it's the greatest handheld gimmick of all time the nintendo switch isn't and it's not a handheld it's a hybrid it's a home console that you can take on the go it's not a purely handheld it's a hybrid so it's the greatest gimmick for anything that's considered a home console of all time. A home console is something that you plop, you sit down, you plop it into something, you, you, you play with the controller, you plug it into your TV, and it works that way. Um, but the Switch is something unique and different because not only can you, not only do you, when you play it on the TV, it actually, it can access more power, right? It changes then it's on the go. It's actually a weaker system on the go than it is at home so that's what makes it a hybrid it actually changes you know whereas other systems you've had before where it looks the same when you play it on like like a nomad right it looks exactly the same for the most part right it's just sd it looks the same switch is um switch is different because it actually gets more powerful like you can run higher resolutions sometimes frame rates are better all that good stuff you know because it, it you know you don't have to worry about battery life and all that it can draw more power it can draw more gigahertz from the cpu you know um PSP Go is a hybrid. Uh, PSP Go and hybrid. Nah, PSP Go isn't a hybrid because once again, once you plug it into your TV or anything like that, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't really. It doesn't change. It's just. It's still the same thing. 
Um, there's no separate modes. It's not like a handheld. It's not like developers have to program for handheld and program for home console. And on top of that, many games look jank on there. When you plug it into your TV, like a PSP, it looks jank as hell. And on top of that, you can't use the controller. That's weird. You have to get a different controller to play it. Um, as well, or it's just awkward with the with the with the wire hanging out from there. So it's it's not built to be. It's not it's not. They're not real hi uh, hybrids. They're just handhelds. Whereas the Switch, it literally it transforms. Like hey, you want to play on the TV? Bam, take the controllers out. Go there. You want to play on the go? Put the Joy Cons back in. Play it as a handheld. You know, it's a real hybrid. Whereas the PSP and all that, it's just those are handles that you can just plug into your TV. But things don't change. It's not a real hybrid. You know, um, <clears throat> it's not a real one. Uh, so does the Game Boy coming out and the GBA? Uh, so does the Game Boy coming out and also does the GBA through the GameCube a gimmick for me? Do we dock the same results either way? Not really, because those are two separate systems. Like, that's not a hybrid. A GBA, like a GameCube, you need a GameCube and you need a GBA, or you need a GBA player that plops into there. But then you also need a separate system when you play on a plane on the go. With the Switch, you just grab your Switch and you go. It's a real hybrid. Those are two separate systems. You know what I'm saying? That's not this. That's not a hybrid. When you need two systems, you know, it's like a Vita and it's like a, a PS4. That's not a hybrid. You need a Vita and you need a PS4. That's not a hybrid. You need two systems. It's not the same thing, <laughs> you know. Um, let's see here. I wanted to see Edgar react to the pink switch light, and we never get to see it rip legend. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> what about the new Game Boy coming out? Oh, are you are you talking about that? Uh, I forgot what you're talking about. It's like uh, one of those people are making something to where you can like dock it to your tv then play it on the go yeah that's a hybrid because it's like you can do it you can do the, like you know both of them so yeah that that's more of a hybrid um but it's not i don't think i don't know if it's as good as switch <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna be i mean it's, it's it plays game boy games right so it's, that's different and yeah the analog pocket yeah i'm gonna get one of those by the way i'm gonna get one i'm gonna start collecting game boy games and all that crap um let's see here um Super Super Nintendo Game Boy player, Super Nintendo Game Boy player. That's not a hybrid, guys. That's not that's not that that's a separate. You need to have a Game Boy in order to play your games on the go. You guys, you guys understand what a hybrid is? Like not playing your Game Boy games on a TV. That's not a hybrid device. That is simply taking something, taking a device, and allowing you to play whatever games on your TV. A hybrid is something that transforms. It does something that does both. If your Super Nintendo could somehow you have your Game Boy player plugged into there, your Super Game Boy player, and like you can take your Super Nintendo by itself and still play the games. And that would make sense, but you still need the TV and all that. You know what I'm saying, guys? So like you have to realize like those aren't hybrids. Those are simply just the apparatuses, devices that allow you to play a certain game that you couldn't play like, you know, on your TV. That's 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 very different. <laughs> that's a different thing. So people that are saying Game Boy players and, and you know, and Super, Super Nintendo Game Boy, those, those aren't the same thing. Like, 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 for example, you can play Pokemon Red and Blue on your TV if you have a transfer pack and Pokemon Stadium. That's not a hybrid. This is being able to, a little device and an application that allows you to play Pokemon on your TV with the, through your N64, you know? Um, so, so, yeah. Um... So let's see here. Switch is the console that can do both travel and dock. Uh, Switch is nice. Yeah. Is mayonnaise a hybrid? It, it, it is. It is. PS4 remote play? No, because you need another device. <laughs> it's not a hybrid. You need two devices. Without the PS4, there is no remote play. There is no hybrid play. <laughs> a hybrid is not two devices. A hybrid is one device that allows you to do both. <laughs> Hybrids. One device that allows you to do both things. Not that you have to rely upon another device to do something. <laughs> to play rem um, PS4 Remote Play, you need the PS4. <laughs> you need the PS4 in order for it, for, for it to work. So therefore, you need two devices. Hybrid is one device that transforms into two. You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Google Stadia is not a, it, it is a hybrid platform as in it's it, it can go to various different places but it's not a hybrid device you still need two separate devices if you want to make it into like let's say you want to play on the tv or on the computer screen well you need that computer screen you need that tv you need that you know what i'm saying and like 
when you want to play on the go, you can't like transform your computer. You have to like get a cell phone. So you need multiple devices in order to make Google Stadia work. Now it's convenient because you can use a cell phone, but then you're also gonna you're also gonna need some type of controller apparatus for most of the games on there. I don't think you want to play Final Fantasy 15 without a controller, right? So you need some type of controller apparatus. You know, you need some type of thing that, that you have to buckle on if you're playing on your cell phone. So it, there are other things that are involved, you know. <clears throat> All other things that are involved. Uh, but yes, get Google Stadia, it's just a streaming, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a streaming service that's that can be moved to different devices. So, I mean, it's 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 uh, it, it can be in different places at different times, you know. But it's not a hybrid device. Neo Geo X, yeah, Neo Geo X, yeah. Ian Bleach, is it Beach? What's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> Why are people talking about stupid Google Stadia? You said Stevia. Is that like a? Is that like a woman's like Stevia? That's like a woman's like drug for something, right? How do you view Wii U in terms of being a hybrid since the controller made it be able to play the gamepad with the TV necessary to use the Pro Controller? I think that it was an incomplete hybrid, Brandon. That's why I say it's the real precursor to the real hybrid, the Switch. The Wii U, you don't need a TV to play the games. However, <laughs> you need to be in proximity of that second device. Now, it comes with everything, right? You can play right there. You can play on the go, but there's a limit. Once you go far enough, uh-oh. The connection's lost, so you need the Wii U base. The gamepad does not do enough by itself. Now, if you can take the gamepad any way that you want and still play those games, I mean, that would be more of it because it's 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 an all-in-one device. You get everything in one. It's not like, okay, here's this PS4, here's this Vita. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's separate. Two separate devices, different, uh, you know, SKUs, you know, stuff like that. It's just, but it's all in one thing, you know? um so yeah you need to be in proximity of it so so that's unfortunate um it's like a it's 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 almost a hybrid it has hybrid capabilities but it's just not quite there you know it's just not quite there but you can use it as one you know it can be like a little like a hybrid junior but unfortunately it's not a real true hybrid because a handheld you can take anywhere that you want handheld you can take it on a plane people have been playing game boys since how long in the 80s on a plane you can take it on the train you can take it anywhere that's what a hybrid can, a real hybrid can do that for you. you can take it anywhere and then when you get home it's easy bam it's right there no problem i can set it up to my tv no problem no issues to me the switch is the cleanest hybrid of all time because it really is like it gives you everything that you need for hybrid capabilities all you need is a tv that's it all you need is some type of tv with the hdmi connection that's all you need is a tv and that can get you the true hybrid nature you know <clears throat> Oh, so here's a question in your opinion. Graphics or story progression? Which is better? Graphics or story progression? I don't know, man. I think gameplay is the most important. Everything else is just secondary, I guess. The Wii U is literally what the Switch is, but it was made for the tech. It was not available at the idea of the console. I, yeah, it was just, it was a little... Yeah, I mean, you're right in some regards. I mean, obviously, we're not in the war rooms when they were planning everything. But yeah, it was just... They were still going to make... The 3DS was already a thing, so they weren't thinking about it. The R&D for the 3DS was separate from the R&D for the Switch. That's the reason why you don't have a lot of cross-progression and cross-stuff between Wii U and 3DS because the systems are just too different. They're just too different. Um, you know, there's barely any. And when developers do it, it's like something they have to actually invest time into. Like Super Smash Bros. using the 3DS control, like using the 3DS as a controller, you know? Um, so, so yeah, man. Like, it's it, you're, you're right about that. <clears throat> Chris got games. Relax. <laughs> relax. Did you see the tweet that Konami says that they're not working on with Sony on a new Silent Hill game? Um, I did not see that tweet, but I wouldn't trust anything Konami has to say, to be honest, bro. Um, they can say one thing one day, then say something else the next day. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, guys, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to move to random q and I actually have to go to sleep really soon here guys okay i have a video ready for you guys in the morning so shout out to everybody who's watching a video is ready to go i think i have that video set for 4 a.m my time so it is gonna be a little bit earlier so i do have a video ready to go for you guys i'm gonna take some q a questions for about i can't go past 10 30 my time and i probably not, won't go past 10 15 my time i am going to eat and then go to sleep right away um so um 
Um, so uh, what's it called? So you guys can uh, ask me some questions. And I'll be more than happy to answer them um, in the chat for just a bit of time. And then I am going to sleep. I can't go to sleep any later than 11 o'clock. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so, let's see here. <clears throat> um, so, give me your questions. Tag me at Player Essence. Hashtag Player Essence or just Player Essence. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. More than happy to answer any questions you guys have. OJ, what's your favorite Fire Emblem game? Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Fire Emblem Three Houses. And why? Uh, the three paths, uh, the story, uh, the advanced combat, um, just everything that they've done. Um, the the uh, battalion or battalions, just everything is just amazing in that game. The story, the storytelling, it's phenomenal. Characters, the 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 um, like the the training, like the like the lessons and all that. Like the classes, how you're able to switch from any class, like the 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 freedom to switch classes and stuff like that. It's just it's just all fantastic. Thoughts on Persona Five Royale? Really good, but it would have been nice if there was DLC. If you could just buy this DLC, if you've already played the game, I'm not playing a hundred plus hour RPG on my TV again. Persona Five is a great game, but I'm not sitting in front of a TV and playing that for a hundred hours again to play the extra content. That's that's ridiculous. There should have been DLC, or they should make it to where you can play it anywhere that you want, which would be without garbage PS Vita remote play. I need like I need it on the Switch. I'll play. It. I'll buy it again if it, I buy it for sixty bucks again if it's on the Switch. But I already bought the game. I bought the Take My Heart Edition on the PS4. I, I love the game. It's great, but I'm not buying it again for the extra content. When I'm not sitting in front of my TV and doing that again, I actually put forty hours plus into Persona Five on the PS Vita because of the rope play. Because the game, it's a turn-based RPG. I'm not trying to sit in front of a TV for that long. That's ridiculous. I need to. I need to be able to grind like when I'm watching forensic files and stuff like that because it's boring. I, I like to grind in my RPGs, you know, um, and I like to be able to just like watch TV and, you know, grind. But you can't do that with freaking Persona because you have to be, you have to be on the TV. So no, I'm good. Or you have to use the, I hate remote play. I can't, I'll never use remote play again. Anyway, I'm ranting, but yeah, um, let's see here. Uh, favorite Sonic game. Favorite Sonic game is probably Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, Super Metroid remake or Fusion remake. Uh, Super Metroid remake, probably what I would like more. The Super Metroid is awesome. That's like my favorite Metroid game. Um, let's see. <clears throat> How do you get a custom designer in Animal Crossing? Custom designer in Animal Crossing. I think it's something that like the um, you have to buy it from the Nook ATM machine. So go to the Nook ATM machine and buy it with some Nook miles. <clears throat> Smash main Goku. Goku for sure. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, Joker. Uh, name a food that you could go back in time to eat because it was like the best thing you ever had. Best in the world. Best thing in the world to eat. Yeah, back in the day, uh, in the early 90s, or early to mid 90s, I went to Nigeria uh, where my family's from. Or, you know, my family were, were Nigerian. And I ate, there's this there's this type of food called suya. And I did have it recently um, when, I, when I traveled. But suya is absolutely delicious. It's like a grilled barbecue beef steak type of um, you know meat whatever seasoned to perfection seasoned overnight and grilled over an open flame is delicious so if i can eat that same suya and they served it with bottled coke you know so the coke that coca-cola that's in the bottle that's super like hardcore concentrated super sugary like five million milligrams of sugar back in the day one of those ice cold with some pizza was great I was like my favorite, my favorite meal. It's so delicious. And sometimes they ate it with bananas for some reason. So I'd also have like a, uh, they'd cut some bananas and you'd have suya with bananas. And it, I don't know, I think it offset like the flavor with like a banana, but we would do that too. So yeah, that was good. Um, very good, very good. Um, let's see, do you watch anything other than Forensic Files in anime? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Oh, I did watch um, a brand new documentary on um, Dark Side of the Ring Part One on Vice T on Vice YouTube channel. I do watch some. I do watch like Low Tier God. I do watch streamers every now and then too. Um, but I did watch that, and that was on Chris Benoit and was on Eddie Guerrero. That was amazing. Part One was amazing. I watched that. I think I watched that this morning or was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday or today. 
Oh man, it was so good. If you were into wrestling, watch it. It is it's heartbreaking, but you get the back. Like I've never I never knew Chris Benoit had a uh had a had a son, had an older son, and dude. Dude looks just like him. He looks. He looks. Just, <laughs> he looks just like him. It's sad, but it, it's 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 very interesting because Chris Benoit was one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I mean, obviously, he's he's a horrible. You know what he did was horrible. You know, but he was one of my favorite wrestlers. I loved him. You know, growing up, I loved him, and um, it was just sad. It's just a sad story. So yeah, Dark Side of the Ring. Watch it. It, but you kind of have to like, you kind of have to know who Chris Benoit was and Eddie Guerrero. I mean, if you if you don't if you if you didn't watch WCW and WWF, you know, or WWE, then it's probably not going to be something to watch. But I watched it growing up. I thought it was cool, um, and so yeah, that was great. I, I like documentaries like that. Like I like um, Castlevania. That's not a documentary, but Castlevania Netflix is really good. I like that. But that's just whatever. Um, that's kind of like anime too, right? um I, the aaron hernandez documentary that was really good really good so i did watch that that aaron hernandez um the uh what was it who's that uh, uh bundy ted bundy documentary oh that was good too man that was really good um that was really good so yeah so if i'm not watching forensic files stuff i'm watching stuff that has to do with... <laughs> i'm horrible i'm watching stuff that has to do with bad things that happen that could potentially involve forensics I seriously think Chris Christmas had CET or something. Oh, absolutely, he did. I, I mean, did you see how he wrestled, dude? He would, he would. I mean, you know, he would jump off the top ring, the top turnbuckle, and headbutt people. People think wrestling's fake, but it's not. <laughs> it's fake, but it's not fake. Your body gets thrashed when you wrestle. Yeah, he had. Yeah, he probably had it doing all those flying headbutts. And banging your head on people? Like, dude, yeah, man. I mean, like, absolutely. It, people think it's fake, but it's not fake. People legitimately, your body's going to get banged up when you wrestle, you know? It's fake, but it's not fake. Um, but the way that Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit used to jump off the top turnbuckle and headbutt people, like, the flying headbutt. <clears throat> I always found Benoit boring myself, but I uh, but I did like the series. Of, uh, wait, how did you find him? He was techni He was a t what? How? You trying to tell me that the Crippler Croc when he when he would when he would reverse people into the Crippler Cross face? What? Really? You found him boring? Okay. I didn't find. I, I thought he was fantastic in the ring. He he'd suplex people. Germ. He would German suplex people. Power bomb people. Fly off the top rope. Fly out of the the um the the ring. He wasn't. He wasn't boring. Was he? <clears throat> Do you think Switch Pro will ever release? No, I think there's gonna be a Switch Two. I remember the whole thing and him and Kevin Sullivan and the woman was crazy. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I actually didn't know about that. I didn't I didn't know about the behind the scenes stuff with that. <clears throat> I always hated the technical wrestlers. But he wasn't only he was a he was a power and technical wrestler because he would he was intense. He would he he would soup he did power moves too. He did power bombs, he did suplexes, he did like, you know. Uh, brain busters he did all those but then he also did like tactic he always also did reverses and he also flew off of the top turnbuckles and flew out of the ring he was a hybrid <laughs> he was a hybrid he was a hybrid between a power wrestler because he was buff but he wasn't really he wasn't over six foot he was like five foot nine five ten so he was buff so he was a hybrid you know of a, of a power wrestler and a technical wrestler you know <clears throat> Scott Hall, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Ultimate Warrior. What's that? Yeah, all the guys that couldn't wrestle anywhere near as good as Chris Benoit. Yeah, all the guys that were just really big guys that punch you and kick you and powerbomb you, and then you're dead, right? In the ring. Okay, I get it. Yeah, and that's what that's what everybody loved more so than anything was those type of guys. I mean, which I like those guys too. I thought those guys were awesome, but I also like the finer arts of guys that were, you know, 
that could fly in the ring, you know? That could that could that could fly around the ring fast. Like those guys were all slow. You know what I'm saying? Like Hulk and you know, and, and Kevin Nash and Scott, those guys were just big old huge giants that were slow. I mean, I wanted to see variety within the mat. Like, I don't want to see just all big old huge guys that are slow punching each other and like spearing each other like Goldberg. I wanted to see guys that knew how to wrestle, wrestle more. I want to see guys that did technical moves, the guys that flew off the, the top of the term. I don't want to just see a bunch of slow dudes, you know, leg dropping each other all day. Like, that's the problem. It's like, we need variety though, right? Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. Hey, yo. I mean, I, like I said, you, I like those guys too. Those guys were great, but I also like to see the more, like I liked like Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho was a, was a hybrid. He was a, uh, you know, power wrestler that could do power moves, but then also can do technical moves as well. You know, uh, I, I, I like the hybrid guys too. The guys that weren't like the tallest, but were still, you know, big guys that can compete for a title, you know? Um... Kevin Nash was a terrible wrestler, slow and boring. He was a terrible. Kevin Nash wasn't the best, but he's seven foot tall. He's freaking shredder, dude. So you gotta like him because he's big, sexy. You know, he's, he's Kevin Nash. So you you gotta like him because he's just he's just this big old huge man in the ring. So that obviously is an eye opener. But but yeah, man. Edge, Randy Orton, Mister Perfect, Chris Jericho, and Undertaker are my favorite WWE wrestlers. Oh, those are all great wrestlers. I like I liked Edge. I wasn't as big of Mr. Or, Ran or Randy Orton or Mr. Perf. Or, no, Kurt Henning. Kurt Henning. Sorry. Kurt Henning. Yeah. I like Kurt Henning. Uh, Chris Jericho. Yeah. Chris Jericho is great. Yeah. Chris Jericho is easily one of my favorite wrestlers. Uh, Stone Cold was. Yeah. Stone Cold was great. Stone Cold was a great wrestler as well. Um, am I excited for Evo? If it still happens. Yeah. If it still happens. Yeah. Chris Benoit was savage for stealing Sullivan's wife. Well, did you, did you see the whole story behind that though? Well, if you believe what. Eddie Guerrero's family was saying and Chris Benoit's family was saying that Sullivan was, well, you know what? It's actually bad to say this at all, that he was abusive because obviously what happened, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a no win situation. <laughs> I mean, like, what can you say? You know, whatever, but yeah, but he's the one who wrote that into the plot though. I mean, you know how wrestling is though. The more you act, the more you act, the more you act, sometimes it becomes a real thing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it becomes real. The more you spend time, how many times do you see wrestlers get with the female wrestlers or the female employees? Uh, because you're always traveling with them. You're always around them. You're with them. It happens all the time. I mean, it happens. The wrestling business, a lot of them date each other, you know, and stuff like that because you're around them. You're traveling with them. You're acting with them. So yeah, you're going to develop relationships with the women that you're around or with the man that you're around a lot. And if you write it into the plot, that hey this is what's happening chances are it can happen <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, chances are it can actually happen you know so so yeah yeah exactly like china china was with she was with triple h and she was with xbox she was with both before she passed away and I, she was with she was with a number of other wrestlers too but yeah <laughs> um Let's see, I always like the mic stuff and backstage things more than the ring. Yeah, that stuff's awesome. That stuff's awesome. I was a big Booker T fan. Oh, yeah, I love Booker T. I love Booker T. And WCW, when he'd come out and say, five time, five time, five time, five time. <laughs> and then he'd come do like a, the, the, what was a spinner. He'd come do the break, the spinner Rooney break dancing in the ring. I thought that was great. And like his theme music was great, man. I loved it. Um, Yeah, China was, yeah, China originally dated Triple H before all the plastic surgery. And then like a little bit during, like after the plastic surgery too, yeah, China was with Triple H. But then China, uh, but then Triple H left China for Stephanie M M McMahon, which obviously, you know, if you're trying to further your career, right call, you know? <laughs> like, Triple H is an executive now with WWE making tons of money. So, so yeah, man. Stone Cold and Booker T in the grocery store. One of the best of the emotes. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. I was actually, um, I was actually um, watching that too. So it was great. I, I went to that one live. <clears throat> uh, well, we were watching it in the arena. While we were watching it in the arena with The Rock was in the ring. And we were watching it on the screen when they did that. So I was actually at one of the, that was the SmackDown. I was actually at that show. <laughs> VC, I actually drove and went uh, and actually watched that one. So 
It's pretty good. <laughs> I remember that one. And it was so funny. I'll tell you guys a story real quick. I'll tell you guys one more story with that one. Um, <laughs> when I was there, so we had some really sweet, we had some really sweet tickets for that show, VC. And um, there was a skybox, right, in the arena. There was a skybox. And there was these two girls that were sitting there. And um, and there was a bunch of like you know a bunch of guys getting kind of rowdy. They're serving beer and stuff. And uh, one of the girls like they're like like somebody said like hey Jackie. And one of the I guess she was like some type of model or something like that. And she was there with another girl. And they're like hey you two girls kiss. And then the girls were like what? And they're like yeah kiss. And it was like kiss kiss kiss. And then all of a sudden they started kissing. And it was like oh. <laughs> and it was like Jackie Jackie Jackie. <laughs> And me, my friend Turtle, who I went with, and his dad, we were like, whoa! <laughs> no, this was in the audience. This was not in the ring. This was in the audience. This was like, we were in the um, the seats, and they were above us. I think, to, like, I was sitting, like, in the seat, like, here, and they were above us and to the left in one of the skyboxes. We were not that far away, maybe, like, 30 or 40 feet away from them. And uh, so, yeah, it was just, it was just drunk, drunk people in the, in the stands. <laughs> It was just drunk people in the stands. It was right before the whole scene with um with with Booker T and Stone Cold in the grocery store, and we were waiting for them to put it on. You know, we were waiting for them to put it on, and uh, that's what happened in the meantime when people were just trying to find stuff to do. You know, after the Rock's match, or the Rock came out and was like just sitting there and waiting. So we were all waiting, and then that happened in the meantime. Like at first, people were handing them to do stuff because they were kind of like hugging up on each other, and like the whole night they were like, "Yeah, kiss," and like they weren't doing anything. And at the very end, that's what happened. It was funny, man. Uh, best night of your life. <laughs> oh my god, it was it was it was it was it was fun. It was fun. It was fun, dude. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> yeah. This was in the crowd. This wasn't this wasn't paid WWE wrestlers or anything like that. This was just people in the crowd. It was just people. It wasn't executives or the family of the wrestlers. It was just random people in the crowd. So, so yeah. <laughs> It was funny. It was it was it was a it was a it was a funny time. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting story. That I that actually when you talked about that, it just jogged my memory about that uh, about that um about that story in terms of what happened and all that. So so yeah. Anyway, last uh, last thing here before we go, guys. Uh, Switch sales predictions. Uh, obviously, we're going to be getting um, the Nintendo's fiscal year ends uh, next week. So I wanted to know what you guys think that where the Switch is at. Last time that we uh, we knew back in January, they were at. Um, 52 million plus so what do you guys think nintendo's going to report for the sales next month when we hear about them um remember it's going to be sales from the 52 million so from january or whenever that i was actually december december 31st to march 31st those are going to be the sales numbers that we know about december 31st to march 31st for the most part yeah yeah from december all the way through japan to march 31st so what do you guys think um 56 million 55 million 57 million okay 56 million so about they sold about from january to march they sold about 4 million systems is that what you guys are thinking 4 million systems in that in that time frame <clears throat> i'm gonna go with they were at they were at almost 53 million systems last time so i'm just gonna go ahead and say that they're at 53 million so i'm gonna i'm gonna tack on another five i'm gonna tack on a five a five piece for it so I'm going to tack on it. I'm going to say that they're at um, 57 to 58 million. I'm going to say 57 to 58 million. <clears throat> the light too. Yeah, light sales are included. The light came out last last September. We're talking about total. Total sales of the Switch system itself. Total sales. Everything. The Switch is already past 55 million. I think it's past 55 million. I agree. I think it's past 50. Because it was at 50. It was almost at 53 million back at the end of december december 31st so january february march those three months and animal crossing dropped and hella people app switches are sold out everywhere that animal crossing switch is sold out everywhere so i'm gonna i'm gonna say that it's definitely past 55 i'm gonna say 57 million 57 million plus that's what i'm gonna say um good night dragon gamer um <clears throat> So yeah, the switch and the switch light is out there of cheaper prices for people. So, so yeah. Oh, D, D, DJ per, uh, Percy, thank you for the subscription. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stream, my boy. Welcome. Hey, Zave, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. How you doing today? Welcome. Let's 
70 million that's too high that means nintendo sold nearly 20 million systems in three months that's there's no way they, they did that <laughs> that's that's too much that's too much um it's been a slow since january uh saying 50, 55 to 56 um even with animal crossing happy with more though uh the thing about it is, is that it really hasn't been slow. Nintendo's been actually doing pretty good each month. <laughs> if you look at the Japanese media create sales or Famitsu sales, their sales have been really good. Lately, it's been a little bit drier because of some of the the the, um, the, the stuff. But actually, January, February, uh, we're actually pretty good in terms of MPD. In terms of, it's actually, things were actually moving. 58.9 million. That would be, that might be a bit high. So 59 million might be a bit high. 60 million might be a bit high. 55 million seems a bit too low but that it can definitely be there but i would probably say with animal crossing i'd i'd give it i'd give it a 50 i would give it minimum 56 55 to 56 that's that'd be the minimum so i guess 55 isn't too bad that's definitely on the minimum side but the quarter wasn't horrible but yeah the quarter was down year on year i think from mpd from uh february it was down year on year but not too much though but the animal crossing sh animal crossing and the fact that when you go on amazon and there's literally no switches and i know they had stock um, let me see if they actually, I know they had stock. I guess the CV thing is affecting them, but I know they had stock. I know they did. And like, there was, there were systems. There were tons of systems for people to buy this year. And, you know, so people bought those systems. That's why we're seeing the price gouging and the scalping going on with the switch right now. You think Xenoblade will get a bundle? I don't think so. Yeah. It, there's still price gouging and you know, right now we're still seeing price gouging. You can get the switch light for decent prices. Like you can get those for like $199, but if you want a regular switch on Amazon, you're spending at least 500. You're spending nearly $500 for a regular switch. Some 419 for like the one that's not even the new better battery life. The better battery life switch right now, there people are are scalping them for $430, $441 because all of them people bought everybody bought everything. They bought all the stock. <clears throat> um what game came out in February? It doesn't matter. There wasn't there wasn't really much in February, but people still bought systems though. <laughs> it doesn't matter. People were buying the systems for games that already came out before. The Switch has been selling not based on having these crazy system sellers for this year. It's been selling on all of its previous system sellers. So Mario Kart, um, the, the fact that Animal Crossing was coming out, it was dated. The fact that there's like Mario Odyssey, Pokemon Sword and Shield, all the games that came out before were are what's helping the Switch sell. The system sellers that already came out or what's making this switch sell? It, there isn't. It didn't need a new game in February, or January. The previous system cells were making it sell. So, so yeah. Animal Crossing is a hundred percent a console seller. Uh, this is the most excited that I. This is the most hype that I've ever seen for an Animal Crossing game in my life. <laughs> the most hype. It's because it's a Switch, you know. But yeah, people are scalping the hell out of Switches right now. So if you've got extra Switches and you want to make some extra money, feel free to put it online and actually probably get, you know, a lot more money than what you paid for it for. Clean it up. If you still have all the original stuff, just say like new. Like new Nintendo Switch. Clean it up a bit. Make sure you dust it off. Clean it up. Put the in the original packing. Get the box. If you got more than one Switch and you want to sell it, make a little bit of profit, you can do it right now. Uh, the light on Amazon, and uh, you can get it for one ninety nine. You mean the switch, the switch light? It's one ninety. There's there, there's one ninety nine for it. I saw one prices for one ninety nine. Mm -mm, it's one ninety nine. Don't make me. Don't make me. <laughs> don't make me prove you wrong. Okay, it's one ninety nine. Trust me. I literally just looked at it. I literally have a picture right here that says one ninety six turquoise. There's a turquoise switch light for one ninety six. There's a black switch light for one ninety nine. I'm literally looking at it right now, bro. On Amazon, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Unless you're talking about like Canadian dollars or are you somewhere else? Are you in like Europe or something like that? If you're talking about dollars, it's 199. Okay. That's yellow. The black, the black and the turquoise are 199. That's yellow. <clears throat> Is the direct coming or what? The direct already happened. It happened yesterday. You didn't, you didn't see it? It happened yesterday. Hi from Thailand. Hi from Thailand. How you doing? 
Um, let's see. Uh, the, actually, they anticipated the pr this production would um, increase before Animal Crossing New Horizons released. There's a Switch Lite, so 57 million is entirely plausible. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And people are buying the Switch like crazy right now. So, I mean, they really people are really buying buying it a lot. <clears throat> Bro, can you take music requests outside from video games? No, I cannot because that's copyright copyright issues. YouTube will yeet my stream sometimes if I do that. Um, but all right, guys, here's what we're gonna do. Pretty much at three hours for the stream. We're gonna stop it right here. I've got to go to sleep. I suggest you guys wake up tomorrow morning, um, just because you know it's good to it's good to have a good early start in the morning. So uh, so yeah, wake up tomorrow morning. Maybe maybe if you guys want to. Maybe I'll be live. Maybe I won't be live. Who knows? Maybe I'll have videos. Maybe I won't. But I have a video for you ready for you guys at four a.m. Okay, so there will be a video that uh, a PE news video. So please make sure you guys watch that at four a.m. Okay, make sure you watch that at four a.m. Uh, watch my videos guys i do videos every single day so for the people here who aren't watching my videos and ask me a bunch of questions about stuff that i already talked about in video in, in my videos please watch my videos because i spend a lot of time working on those so please watch them my next video will be up at 4 a.m boys 4 a.m west coast time so if you're in the east coast that is 7 a.m if you're in europe that is like afternoon or something like that okay so please watch my videos every single day if you can let's get those views up to 10k views per a pe news video per a switch news video it always has switch topics in there it always has great stuff as well so please watch that it's scheduled yeah for 4 a.m tomorrow morning so please watch the videos guys um i appreciate you guys you guys are all awesome um have a nice night and um i'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the for the video um i don't know if there's gonna be a director or anything like that guys i have no idea if there is i'm just saying i'm waking up early just so i because I, I, I just want to be up you know i just want to be up i want to get some good good night's rest so um all right guys thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it um, if you have not seen my latest Nintendo Direct prediction video, please check that out. I'm going to put a link. If you need something to watch, if you're going to be up for a bit longer, please watch my latest Nintendo Direct uh, prediction video with HMK, a YouTuber with 150,000 subscribers about, and also Endakuba, um, who also has 200,000 plus subscribers. So great content creators, big, uh, big guys on the platform. Please check it out. We did a nice video. I edited the video, 40 minute plus video. I edited it. I put, um, you know, video game gameplay. I put little tweaks and edits here and there. Um, it's edited. The whole thing is edited with nice gameplay over what we're talking about, um, with links to everything, with uh, on display in terms of where you can find them. It's actually, I'm actually really proud of it because most of the time when people do these prediction videos with other people, they just throw something up, which I was going to do the same thing too, but HMK cussed twice. He said the F word twice, so I had to edit out both of those F words. So I was like, you know what? If I have to, if I have to find it and edit it out, I might as well just edit the whole video. So I ended up just editing the whole video um, for that. So finish it if you haven't seen it. It's really good. Those two guys are awesome. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for more streaming, more gameplay, more content, more stuff. All right, guys. Oh, also, Twitch boys, please check out my YouTube video, Twitch boys. If you're on Twitch, there's the video right there. Please check it out. If you haven't done so, watch later, whatever the case is. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye.